since we're in reorganization, I'll start the meet, open the meeting up here called meeting to order at six o'clock, and I'm going to jump the agenda right to the board reorganization, so I don't have to be running the meeting any longer than possible. So I would look for nominations for board chair. Yeah. I'll nominate Chris McVay. Chris, are you willing? To I'm it? absolutely willing to serve. Second for that? I would second that. Is that yeah. getting used to the process? But yeah, that's fine. Are there any other nominations? I would nominate Woden, <laughs> if you would accept. Thank you. No, I'm not. Just, it's just okay. how you verbalize it. No. 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 Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody else who wants the position? I would do board chair. I had thought I wouldn't if you were running. <laughs> discussion. Any discussions? Um. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. I'm just um, giving time for it. Well, no. So um, we, as um, I think is fairly well known on the board, we have a, something to split. Um, which is now evident again. Uh, and I think that we, whoever becomes board chair, uh, will need to work pretty hard. Uh, all of us will have to work pretty hard, but it's not a singular entity uh, that, that does it, uh, to um, move forward. Um, I must say, although we have splits on certain issues, I think we're unified in when we vote for programs and funding for the school and for the students as a whole. And um, that is where I, I don't believe there's any split in that. Um, if I'm elected board chair, um, I would I would try and open things up a little bit, quite frankly. Um, I don't think there would be, uh, even though the board chair is the primary communicator with the superintendent, um, I would share emails. I would, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't stop with me. Uh, there would be a free flow of information uh, so that um, board members were informed pretty closely to in time to when I was informed about matters that come up. Um, you know, because I, I think one of the things that I found pretty frustrating was to find out about things later in time or right before a board meeting uh, when there's really no time for contemplation and reflection. And so um, I, I would really work hard to do that. Um, to be quite frank, I would also uh, work pretty hard to uh, reach out to, to the staff members more. Um, I don't think we've done that well, and I think I would really push to do that because we would hear um, a perspective that, that we don't know often hear and is a very important one because our staff members are the boots on the ground. And they're the ones who are implementing um, all the teaching and the policies that we end up passing. So, uh, you know, just give me an inkling of where, where I think or how I would. Uh, use this role and, and serve in it? Uh, for me, the it's really essential to run a um, an efficient meeting and a meeting that is really clear on what everybody's role is. I was very impressed at the last meeting that took place at U32 when Woden was running it. I liked how she made it very clear um, on agenda items that she would hear from board members first and then open it up to the audience. That um, gave me as a board member a chance to know that I would have the opportunity to share my opinion and it let the audience know when it was appropriate for them to have input. Um, I agree with a lot of um, what Chris said about engaging with the staff. I think the only piece I would add is that I would talk with the board about doing that as an individual. I would not feel that it was my role to go and reach out to them on my own. Um, and I would have some concerns around violating open meeting laws and feel like through our emails we've had to do um, more than two or three reminders about open meeting law, um, specifically uh, with Chris's communication. And that would concern me if he were board chair. Okay. 
guess I'll set. Yeah. Um, well, no, uh, so I'm not for more for more discussion. Um, you know, I um, I want to first just react to the uh, sort of the, the idea of the division and the, and the tension on the board, which I readily admit that uh, that, that there is a, a layer of that that exists. Um, but uh, the idea that this uh, that this board votes uh, three two uh, on a regular basis. Uh, was, which was something I, I heard in leading up to the school board election, um, gave me pause, and I went back to, th to the minutes, because uh, I was really curious. And as it turned out, we cast over 40 votes as a board last year, four of which were 3-2. Uh, and three of those were around board reorganization, and one of them was on adopting the Vermont School Board of Code of Ethics. Uh, so. Uh, you know, I think that's just important to to recognize that uh, the, uh, that when we are, for the for the vast majority of the time uh, we're, we're working uh, ideally in unity on things. Um, I just want to be clear about my position, um, just because I think uh, it's fair to the public. Um, I was sort of not, not expecting this to shake out the way that it did uh, uh, in terms of having this happen yet again tonight with two people running uh, for this position. Um, and I really, had, I myself didn't have any intentions of nominating a challenger to kind of not have this type of dynamic play out. Um, but I just want to be kind of transparent in where, where I'm coming from, um, and um, I have trouble supporting Chris, you, um, in leading our board um, for a few specific reasons, um, and uh, one of them being um, sort of this whole idea of the community forum or mediation that um, we've been sort of uh, wrestling with for many months and uh, sort of back in June that um, sort of was delegated to you to lead uh, and I know at some point along the way um, that switched, passed off and then came back but it took us eight months to finally, you know, once we knew what we sort of wanted to do and that was engaged and facilitated, it took us eight months to make that happen. Uh, and so that's, you know, I have a concern with just that type of follow through on something of uh, when this has that magnitude. Um, I also have uh, concern about um, you know, something that happened last year um, at, a, at a sort of climate meeting uh, at school in which as a member of the, representing the school board uh, with two parents there um, who were sort of preparing to share some very emotional experiences for them. Um, you went at them uh, and in a way, in a way that uh, basically made them feel like they didn't belong in that room um, because they were going to be sharing negative experiences. Um, and uh, that's... <laughs> I just don't think that's the way in which a, a board member can conduct themselves uh, in such a fashion. Uh, and then the last thing is, um, you know, we are about to uh, enter perhaps a new era uh, based on what we find out from the state about whether or not we've received the blessing of our alternative governance model or if they have other plans for us. Uh, and I think it's going to really take uh, true leadership, no matter what, from our board chair uh, to help guide us through that, that process. And uh, no matter what, I think we're going to have to work more closely with other school boards um, as we move forward. And um, I just uh, I don't feel comfortable uh, that you're the best person to meet that, to uh, fill that need. Uh, I really appreciate Caroline's perspective that she brings uh, 
to the table in terms of um, her organizational skills, her, um, but her background um, is very val valuable for someone that uh, you know believes wholeheartedly in education, but has no experience uh, in terms of you know the educational system, uh, and um, as a professional, uh, having her insight uh, from that degree as an educator. And as an administrator, I've found extremely valuable. I think when we're talking about issues um, around things like trauma, that has become you know so, uh, something that we become more in tune with as a really important um, factor in many of the children across our supervisory union that are, are we're dealing with. Um, her knowledge and, and that, so I just I, f I feel like um, there's lots of strengths that she will bring um, that will help us lead us in a way that I, f I would feel positive about moving forward in a way that this board needs to move forward to kind of get beyond the politics of things and start focusing on the kids. So I need to briefly respond to Brian's um, comments about the Climate Committee. Um, and understanding you, you were not at the meeting, um, but you heard about it from your wife, Emily Leader. Um, and I don't know if you ever spoke with um, Pascal uh, Stefani or not, um, but I, I was at that meeting and um, I did not go after either one of those individuals uh, because I knew they were, and, and I, just, I actually couched my comments of saying, um, I understand that, you, that each of your families um, had had experiences. Um, my comments were uh, pointed toward creating a balanced view uh, because there were no, I didn't see any family representatives or folks who had positive experiences with Adam. Um, and and that's what I was voicing. Um, uh, I ended up from, you know, I was supposed to appear at a meeting later in the day uh, and I got a call from Larry Sharp uh, saying that you had called him and we're very upset because Emily had called you very upset uh, and I bowed out of that uh, in deference to you. Uh, so I really disagree with your characterization that I went after anybody. Um, I don't think I do that. I haven't done that in these board meetings, which have been more numerous than the Climate Committee meeting. So um, I just want to put that on the record because we are creating a record here of sorts. And that sure. Okay. In March, when we were discussing this, um, and I don't remember if it was actually at a meeting or <clears throat> more informal, it was suggested that you follow up with the central office staff who was at that meeting and check in and see their opinion. Mm -hmm. Did you ever follow through with that? No. Because the day of that meeting, I was at central office recording the audio and I heard about the incident mm -hmm. because the central office staff Ooh. had communicated, I'm still talking, okay. had communicated with somebody else, which was the superintendent, who let me know that it may cause an issue at the board. And when I said what happened, what I was told was that you had gotten verbally aggressive towards the two parents who were there. And that is why when we discussed it in March, I had suggested that you follow up with the central office staff who was at the meeting, and you said that would be a good idea. And so who are you referring to? The director of student services who was leading so, the meeting. So Kelly Frost. No, and I don't use staff names at board meetings. Okay. I use positions. Well, I think in terms of transparency, we need to be able to talk about individuals um, who you're referring to, and the director of student so, services is who? It's Kelly Bushy, and I wonder Bushy. if this right. is getting to a place that would be better to have another discussion at another time on this subject. Uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let it go, saying, but I, you know, the other times I'm just trying to I'm trying to keep us in a place on the target of where we are on the agenda. But that's the part of our difficulties that we don't have these frank discussions in public as we should be. Um, so uh, Kelly Bushy um, may have taken that tack, but there are other members from Central Office, like the psychologist Carol Holden. I believe there are multiple other uh, members of the Romney staff who were there as well. Uh, and did you did you ask any of them? This is not about 
I mean, I'm, I'm just asking I was question. asking if you followed up because you had said when we discussed it that that would be a good place to go to get feedback about it. Well, did, I don't know if you ever mentioned Kelly's name, but I was sitting right next to Kelly. She was right at my side, uh, and she, I was certainly voicing my opinion about why other family members were not there, uh, but I did not consider myself to be going after Pascal or Emily. Well, I, th I think what's important is that a couple things. One, you have to recognize where perhaps your intent was and what the actual implications were on the receiving end of, of that for the people that were there. Um, I also, you know, understand that Kelly told you to stop. Yeah. And Lowry finally told you to stop. Well, I actually, after Kelly told me to stop, I stopped. You know, because the others were uncomfortable. And I was voicing opinion about a balanced view and presentation to a climate committee that was um, investigating a, a climate. And climate is not one-sided. Uh, and perception is not necessarily reality. You I think um, I'd like to say that I think we have a lot to work out clearly. I think that um, it is very appropriate to do it in a public session. I don't know that this is the right moment. Um, I am supporting Chris for chair because I think he's in the best position to um, work with Amy, work with Bill, and work with community members and work with the staff. Um, and I have always seen him to behave um, with great propriety and um, also a sense of curiosity that I think is quite useful in this position. I have one small thing to add. Um, I don't know Carolyn quite as well as I know Chris. Uh, I think that Caroline has some real strengths in really following policy um, and really making sure that rules are being followed, which is really great. Um, Chris, I have to say, I, I have been more and more impressed with Chris McVeigh throughout this entire campaign. I talked to probably 60 people in our community, calling people and trying to reach out to them at various times. Um, and Chris came up multiple times with how many people felt comfortable with some of the decisions that he made, how they felt like he had a really fair and balanced view of things. Um, and getting to know him personally, I've, I have to say I've been actually really shocked by sort of the breadth of knowledge that's been there. So that is, um, I, I support Chris for sure as the chair for that reason. And um, Caroline, I think you have a lot of fantastic strengths as well. And so I, I think especially the way that you can really kind of see through the issues and make sure that the rules are being followed is something that as a board I'm sure we will benefit from greatly. Are you ready to vote? Are you ready to keep discussing. I'm ready to vote. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor of Chris McVeigh being chair of the Romney Board signify sorry, I should say the Middlesex School Board, because it's not the Romney Board, it's the Middlesex School Board. Aye. Signify Aye. Aye. All those in favor of Caroline being the chair of the Rum of the Middlesex School Board. I'm still trying to switch my language. Aye. Aye. Congratulations, Chris. You are the chair. I turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Um, so let me welcome everyone to our meeting tonight, um, and we certainly will, we, we expect and hope for communication with the audience as we go along when the time is appropriate, uh, but we're going to continue on our, our agenda, but we welcome everyone uh, to our meeting, and um, so we will continue with the reorganization. Um, the next online is to elect a vice chair um, of the board. Are there any nominations for vice chair? I nominate Car uh, Caroline Maddox. I second. <clears throat> Are there any more nominations? Any discussion? Does anybody else want the position? Hearing none, um, call the vote. All in favor of Caroline May as Vice Chair of the Middlesex School District? Aye. 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 Uh, next position up is to elect a clerk. 
um, are there any nominees? Can I just give a little, and Chris, I'll do this a couple times. I'm sorry, I've just been sure. doing this with all the boards. Um, that clerk, you're taking minutes if um, there isn't a secretary present, and it does mean that some signatories are needed by the clerk at a couple times during the year, mainly around uh, the bonding of money because of the, just a different signature line than the all the board. So I just wanted to say those are, it's not a big heavy duty, but it's one to know what they are. Okay. Yeah. Any nominees for a clerk? A question about the clerk position? I have a particular interest in being a part of communicating our, uh, creating a bridge between the, the board and the community. Um, so does the clerk position have a specific role in communicating with the community? Or is that something else? We did not. So under stat, I'm just going to answer it factually. Under statute, no. In some boards, yes. That's up to the board. We, um, this past year, had somebody other than the clerk responsible for communicating. Okay. So it could be part of that position. It doesn't have to be. Yeah, we could. Yeah, it could be part of the position. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I have a particular interest in that. And by that, I mean... Um, I feel that we need to have a website that's more transparent and more helpful to people regarding what exactly is at each meeting, when the meetings are, where they are, uh, and generalized communications maybe through the, run new, the the newsletter that goes out, front porch forum. Um, I think those are kind of the, the big ones. And so I, I have an interest in, in doing that job if nobody else does. And if somebody else does, I'd like to talk about maybe perhaps the ways that you might like to do that job also. So I'm not sure if that counts as this, but I nominate Allison Corbett. Okay. <laughs> Good, Good job. job. <laughs> Senior people don't get the <laughs> Are there any other nominations? Any discussion? Would anybody else like the job? No. Sounds like you're a lock. <laughs> and Allison, we would, and Allison, we would, I would gladly take your help. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, I'm, and I say that with all sincerity. Um, is it is it you that deals? With I'm it? responsible for it, so okay. we can talk about that. And I know that's a discussion item later. Okay, great. Okay, so all in favor of Allison Farmer um, as clerk? Aye. 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 So the next um, item up is to establish uh, the date and time of a regular meeting. Uh, and in our board packet, we had a memorandum from U32, and we have a uh, U32 rep who might be familiar to some of us. Mm -hmm. um, to speak to that issue, um, yeah. we just great. Go ahead. I'm Adrian McGeeda. Adrian McGeeda yeah. of the U32 board. Scott is here. He's also U32 board member. Um, for I don't know, at least the 12 years I've been on the U32 board, and probably many, many more before that, the U32 board met meets the first Wednesday and the third Wednesday of the month. Probably a couple years ago, we tried to streamline it so we were only meeting one Wednesday, but they're always November, <clears throat> excuse me, November, December, January. <clears throat> we always meet twice a month. So we always meet the first Wednesday and the third month, Wednesday during budget season because we can't get it done in just one meeting a month. Last year, the Rumney Born, unbeknownst to us, chose the third Wednesday of the month for their meeting, and it had never been there before. And so November, December, and January, we didn't have Bill at our meeting because you only meet once a month, so of course he would come to you. We had to wrestle about Lori at our meeting, and it just seems like it would be great if you guys could choose a meeting that didn't conflict with ours mm -hmm. because I think it would be better for everybody, your board, our board, and the, both communities. People in Middlesex could go to U32 board meeting or the Rumney board meeting. They wouldn't have to choose one. Not that people do that a lot, but I would just appreciate your consideration of a different night. Okay. Do we have information on when all the other boards So meet? you are the last board to meet right now this Great. month. So I can tell you what's happening, and then I'll tell you, as you all know, I'm do working on my doctorate that Chris has been instrumental in helping me get to that um, through your leadership over the years and encouragement. Um, so Tuesday nights is my doctoral night because I have, I have online meetings on Tuesday nights. Okay. We've set that as our cohort. And you want to be at these meetings? Uh, I'd like to be at all the meetings. <laughs> You're kind of exciting. <laughs> my, my, you know, I'm your, I am your 
your superintendent. So I think I know there are a lot of other places for input, but I'm one of them. Um, so I would do. I um, I've expanded from when I initially was here, which was just Monday or Wednesday. So I would add Thursdays. I would add other times. Um, so Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Sorry, that was a little long. Okay. And, and the other boards. There's a euro bill. Yeah. Uh, Fridays, if you want to do Fridays too, I don't know. Many people want to be here on a Friday night. I don't want to do Fridays. <laughs> um, how about board members? Are there any particular days during the week that are very difficult for any of you? And, my, and I'll, I can tell you the schedule of the other boards when you get there. Well, actually, we want to hear that now. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so uh, Berlin is on the, the U32 is on the first and third Wednesday. Berlin is on the second Monday. Doty is on the second Wednesday, and East Montpelier is on the third Monday. I would, and Calus is on the third Thursday. East Montpelier, you say third Monday? Yes, at the wow. third Thursday. And I would tell you one of the things we learned with Calus, and the reason they moved to the third Thursday, is that the fourth week of the month, two times, February and December, is usually has a vacation, so you're rescheduling. And the fourth Monday of the month, gets impacted four or five times a year because of holidays like Memorial Day, da 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 da. So I just know those days because we've tried to or trying to make it as efficient for board members as all also. We just have started to learn the patterns of the calendar. So the fourth Wednesday sounds like it's available. Is Sorry, that that's true? An exe that is usually either a supervisory union meeting or the executive committee we're right now having even established that's going to happen tomorrow mm -hmm. night. Do the supervisory union meetings, uh, do they ever meet when the local boards do not? Well, we would, so this is a whole other issue we're going to talk about in a minute down here about calendaring. We're going to do a better, two years ago, you know, we did a calendar. Mm -hmm. And last, and I was I had feedback from two years ago, don't do the calendar again. There's been too many changes. So last year we didn't do a calendar. That created more chaos. Mm -hmm. So this year we're doing a calendar again. Um, but... They usually happen on, those would be those carousel meetings. Mm -hmm. um, this will be discussed at the executive committee tomorrow night and probably the supervisor union. I, I'm hoping it will be because I think there should be some discussion on this, but there was, um, we've had four carousel meetings seem to be what's working plus a budget meeting for the SU. Those carousels have been September, October, February, and June where March and December there are SU board meetings that have to happen, but they're not necessarily a carousel. Which I mean a carousel, there has to be a local board. That's a Say lot that of information without a graphic <laughs> yeah. picture of all this. So, okay. well, how about any, any of you folks? Tough nights? I mean, Thursdays are tough in summer because my husband sails. Mm -hmm. We don't meet that often in summer. Right. Probably I'd rather, I mean, I'd rather a Thursday than a Monday. I think Mondays are really tough. Mm -hmm. I find Wednesdays, it's really hard for me to get here right at 6. You can do it by 6.15, 6.30. Oh, no, I, I, I think we can work. Right. I thought Wednesdays were Wednesday, out. I think Wednesdays are, are totally out. First, third, out. fourth. Wednesdays are pretty much taken. Okay. And second. Okay. Yeah. We're so all taken. So we're looking Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday Friday. Thursday, Thursday. I could Friday. do Friday. <laughs> Tuesday, I would I would ask not to, otherwise I'd be oh, good because you're cold. Okay, so Monday, Thursday, basically. Monday, Thursday, yeah. Okay. And right. then the Mondays would either be the first or the fourth, where there wouldn't be a conflict. Okay. Thursdays are open for first, second, and fourth right now. So we have Monday versus Thursday at this point. I guess how difficult is Thursday for Caroline versus somebody said Monday was a problem. I said Monday was a problem. Oh. I just found, as an administrator, it was hard to have the late night be at the beginning of the week, and then you have the whole week to get through before you can rest and recover. Oh, I see. Ms. Kapoor, Amy, any days in the week that are difficult for you? No. Okay. She works all the time. Well, maybe, but you may have, she probably has social life. Too. I also have a preference for Thursday, actually, just because people have sick animals and they always call me on Monday. So <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Especially if we did like the first Thursday of yeah. the month. Um, it usually rains then. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, yeah, it, it's fine. Do you have a problem with Thursday? First Thursday of the month works for me, except I will not be here on May 3rd. 
Okay. Oh, that's I won't either. That's my son's birthday. Didn't know that was the date. Okay, that's my son's I don't know if it matters to you, but I can't do minutes on the first or third Thursdays. Are we having those meetings? The first and third Thursdays. First and third. So, but I can tell you we Thursday? do so we juggle just... our, our. With someone else. Who's... We can juggle. I can't promise that, but I'm pretty sure we can. We've been juggling can our like takers. <coughs> you can just pick so the second, second Thursday. Thursday is yeah, the 12th. Yeah. That's not vacation yet. I would actually it's suggest that might be easy. So one of the things we learned and one of the reasons the 14th, you all thought about not Day being school. on the first Monday, first Somewhere Monday, remember there. we used to be there That's for three good. years, the mm -hmm. first Monday, okay. was that it was so early in the month <coughs> that there were some things. So I actually would, would support a second Thursday instead of a first Thursday. I think it actually makes it easier. I mean, Adrian and Scott, you may know that sometimes at U32 we get, we're in the first of the month and then we got a long time that first week to go. And sometimes the benefits, it's kind of a roll of the dice. The, one of the problems with the first Thursday of the month is when you have a full board meeting and a carousel meeting, it's the last Wednesday of the month. And so you're literally meeting three or four days mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. And so if you wait another week, yeah. You've generated more business instead of sort of saying we Second just Thursday. met. <laughs> makes for a quick meeting, but but then it makes for a long yeah. time. Okay. So. Second Thursday. Right. I don't uh, care. Okay. okay. So we move that we pick the second Thursday of the month as our regularly scheduled board meeting. Um, and anybody have time a uh, time problem with six? Uh-uh. At six o'clock p.m. A second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate that. Yes, I thank you. So now we need to establish the um, the newspaper and the locations for uh, official postings. May I talk to this one as well, you, Chris? I'm going to be sure. doing this to you a lot. I'm sorry. Sure. No, no. Just to give you information, um, I would recommend that you use the Times Argus so we have the same paper across all our schools. Yeah. And and this doesn't mean we won't do other places. The other thing is the statute has a minimum of two official postings. We already posted more than two the two official. But I recommend that in case we have an emergency meeting or a 24 hour meeting, that's easier to get postings up where they need to be. They rarely happen. Um, but we'll post it as many places as you want, but that in this motion, it's important to say just the two official physical locations. And they must be physical, they can't be virtual. Mm -hmm. And currently, I believe that it's the town offices and here. Mm -hmm. okay. um, anybody have any problem with continuing that as the, as the basic posting sites? But you can go more than more than that, you should. Okay, so I move that we Established time August as our official newspaper and location uh, the minimal statutorily required um, uh, posting locations of the um, Romney School and the Middlesex Town Clerk's Office in the bulletin board there. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, next up is to uh, elect a representative and, and an alternate to the uh, WCSU Executive Committee. I nominate Brian Tagliaferro for the representative of the Executive Committee. Any other nominations? Do we know what day that meeting is? So right now, tomorrow, it's Thursday, but we don't have that sex. We're waiting for all this calendaring mm -hmm. to happen, and it looks at the issue. One of the things that we have found is that the supervisory union meeting and having the Executive Committee meeting on the same night doesn't work. I'm just saying it that plainly and blankly. It's just, it's really cumbersome to either have a half hour or an hour meeting right before. And it's been much better from what I've heard from executive committee members is we've tried to move it somewhere into the third week. Um, most likely that will be either a Wednesday or a Thursday. Uh, but we have the U32 meeting schedule as well. Um, so those are the places I think it will be the third. Thursday, but I'm just not sure I need to talk it over with the executive committee and look at the SU and kind of balance this calendar. It's one of the things we're going to talk more about that as we get further down into the SU committees as well. We're still trying to juggle that. That's the best I can tell you right now. It's traditionally it always been the fourth Wednesday, but doing more carousels and the way the SU, the executive committee has been working is to try to develop things collaboratively there for the SU board meetings. Um, so to be able to do that, having it on the same night doesn't work. 
I wish I had a I wish I had a more definite answer. I just Do don't. You? I nominate mm. Chris McVeigh. <clears throat> okay. Are you willing? Is that what? Yeah, yeah, I'm willing to do that. So um, any other nominees? For the executive committee position of, as re representative. Any discussion? I served on the executive committee this past year and worked um, with Kari Bradley to uh, <coughs> tweak the superintendent evaluation. We had a goal of 100% board participation. We did have an increase in the number of board members who completed their evaluations, but it was not 100%. Did you complete your superintendent evaluation? Did you complete yours? I did. So did I. And is there you ask a, every other board member now? I am. I was planning to ask last time, but we didn't have time. Um, we can hear the questions now. Did you um, write comments as well yes. as scoring? Yes, I did. So I will say that having read all of the comments, I was surprised that some of the ones that you had made in public and in the executive session where we discussed it did not show up on the evaluation. So, and um, so let's do this. Let's have, since you're relying on evaluations that were submitted uh, for the superintendent's um, evaluation, right? You're citing my evaluation in particular. I don't, no, 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 no. We can't see them. Okay. I don't know who <coughs> submitted which so one. Then, so then I'm gathering the data. Okay. And based on the data and seeing the comments, I had made the assumption that you had not done yours. Because the be comments. Clear, you ask Harry. Kari, because I wrote to him directly, and he sent me an email saying thank you. Great. I said you're welcome. So Brian, so did you complete yours? Yours? I did tell me. Were you challenging the veracity of my answer when I said yes? I, no. I, found, I, I believed you. Comment saying I didn't see the comments that we had talked about. I don't know. No, I believed you when you said yes. Okay. I was questioning. I was questioning that you did not make those comments. That surprised me. Okay. I'm not questioning that you did it. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you have spoken strongly about specific issues and those comments were not on the evaluation, that was surprising to me. And last year when you ran, you had talked about how you would take that role and the evaluating of the superintendent personally and that some of the things you would do would be to communicate when you felt necessary directly with the superintendent. Mm -hmm. Whereas I felt that going through the means of a formal evaluation was more appropriate. Which comments do you think I didn't make? Um, there were limited comments specific to um, um, community support. Mm -hmm. And um, an overall staff that you had, when we went through each one in the executive session, that you, we had talked about the importance of comments. So now you're talking about comments that we made in executive session. Um, and I, I would say that the comments I did make on Bill's evaluation, I think were, were very specific. Uh, and I hope helpful. Uh, I, I don't get to see them. them. I, I don't get to see them. Uh, I only get and, to see a summary. And probably identifiable. Great. Um, so, yeah, <coughs> I, I just say for clarity, since we're talking about my evaluation here, yep. and uh, we set this pattern, Chris, when you helped develop it, and I think it was actually a good thing that I get to see a summary, but I don't get to see the individual comments. Okay. And they get filtered and given to me. And I don't get to see actually individual comments. I just get to see the summary of what the evaluation team puts together. I actually wish I did see all the comments, not trying, and I don't want to try I to attach them to anyway. I think they'd be helpful. Yeah, they so I think that's, and that's what we do with principals, teachers, everybody. So, and also in response, in terms of the evaluation, um, um, I would advocate for a broader range of evaluation so that we have uh, responses from uh, like staff members um, because uh, the superintendent serves all of our uh, members, not just the board members. And I think the board members oftentimes are, you know, just don't have a broad breadth of experience uh, with with Bill because they see him at board meetings and they don't see him in, in the 
operation of the school. So that is something I advocated for originally, uh, and the full board did not want to do that, and that did not come. That it wasn't expanded last year, and I think I actually think it should be, uh, because you can get some valuable insight um, on performance based on the individuals who have the uh, more direct relationship. And it's not necessarily just board members or administrators, it's teachers. Yeah, that was a piece of what Kari and I designed. It was... For the teachers? I think... Through the administrators. We are going to talk about the, the evaluation tool at some point, correct? <clears throat> Is that on our agenda for perhaps next week? Well, you, um, no. No. The, no. So we, the executive committee right did it. Just the executive okay. committee. Okay, I thought we were going to have a <coughs> moment to provide feedback on that. That would be helpful at some point. Maybe we can okay. do that next meeting. Any more comments? <clears throat> Brian, did you complete your superintendent evaluation? Yes, I did. Thank you. Um, so, on favor of uh, Chris McVeigh as the um, uh, run the rep on the executive committee. Aye. 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 Um, all in favor of Brian <coughs> Kelly Power. Aye. Okay. Uh, next up is the alternative to the WCSU executive committee. And I would nominate Brian if he's willing to serve. Hmm. <coughs> no. You don't want to serve? No. Okay. Anyone else interested? Mm -mm. I nominate Allison. <laughs> I, second, I would second Allison. <laughs> Uh, and so, just from a practical standpoint, this yeah. is, if you can't go to the meeting, I go in your stead. Yep. And, and you can go. And I can go even if I wish to. Well, there, there, just there are open voting, meetings. Voting Anybody member. can be there. Right. So just not a voting right. member. Yeah. But you are a voting member when you're when you're When, when you're right. on. That's correct. And you become a voting member for the SU board. That's right. Because, because the bylaw, one of the things that we learned two years ago, getting tighter on the supervisory union bylaws, is that the bylaws actually state for the supervisory union if you are the executive committee member or the alternate, you become a voting member for the SG board. So, one of three. Okay, and so this is occasionally potentially on the third Thursday of the month. No, we no what I, I, I wish, I, I, wish sure. that I okay. could promise you something else. All right. I just don't have it right now. That's okay, I, I, can, um, I can accept this. Okay. Uh, so, uh, is there a second? I'll oh, second. Um, all in favor of Allison Cornwall as the alternative for the um, executive committee as a runly rep? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, so next is to elect three members to the uh, supervisory union board. Uh, and the executive committee member and the alternative must alternate must be voting members of the, uh, exec of the supervisory union board. So it looks like we have one final individual uh, to be um, selected. I um, nominate Chris McVeigh, Allison Cornwall, and Brian Tagliaferro as our three voting members on the Supervisor Union Board. I would second that. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now we're down to uh, electing a representative and alternate to each of the following WCSU committees, and we'll take them one by one. Can I, and Bill, why don't you? Yeah, I was going to let me speak to yeah. all the workload that's on, because all of these have different workloads. Okay. Um, in negotiations, there really isn't an alternate. I've been discouraging that, um, even though it is required by our bylaws, but the way we do interest-based bargaining, the ground rules that get set in there, and Scott, you're in there, so you can confirm or I wasn't there you, you were in there and then yeah, you Carl's said that like Carl's, Carl's there is now but you've been in the you've been in the interest base that usually the first ground rule that gets set with the associations is if you start negotiations you stay in negotiations someone cannot sub in for you mm -hmm. if you miss a meeting you miss a meeting is negotiations are they up this year they are next year we'll, sorry thank you for helping me I wasn't being totally clear um, we'll be negotiating a teacher contract and an ESP contract, although the ESP contract is not, uh, does not affect the Middlesex School District. Okay. Um, and so there will be quite a few meetings without calendar because they'll be trying to get I a group of 20 one. together. Uh, and are you ever saying now the sense of when those meetings? I have no idea. Okay, so uh, any 
individuals interested in? I'm sorry, I missed. Do we know dates and times for any of the meetings? Is that what no, you just asked? No, it's all okay. just last time, So last time negotiations was an early afternoon, like it was a four. It, 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 it really depends. I can't. It's who's on the committee chooses it's it. It's who's on the group. It's it's a negotiations with the association. It generally tries to happen. We usually try to have three hour sessions. We try to start as soon as after school as we can. Um, last time the rep from the Middlesex board was Lowry Scharf, and Lowry continued after he was off the board to continue mm -hmm. through that. Um, it we've had some years where it's been four meetings. We've had some years where we've gone all the way to mediation, so it can be any of the in between. And um, I think we have very good labor relations right now. <coughs> I'm biased. Who is on negotiations from Doty? Uh, Johnny Waterhouse. Great. She did awesome last time, so I was making sure somebody who... And Susanna <laughs> Culver, who I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, she's been chairing it the past two or three times, and she's on it again from Cal's. Any interest? Not really. I tried it last time, and my work schedule didn't allow it, and... I can't. The, the time commitment that it could require last time, I can't put myself in that position. Mm -hmm. Scott. Please forgive me, Chris. I'm not volunteering, <laughs> but I just have to say. Spring season, it's <laughs> training here. Uh, um, I, I just have to interject that in my, uh, I don't know, maybe. 10 years of being a member of a board is probably the most positive experience, sustained experience I've had as a board member, is doing, being on the negotiations, doing interspace bargaining. On both sides, we have really good labor management relations. He's not kidding. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a really good reason for that, because the process is great, the people are great. It's just really good experience. So. Okay. Um, can we take a step back and see what of these things people do have an interest in so we can start to see where we're I can heavy in light? I'll speak to all of them if you'd like. And then, well, you do, yeah. and then we'll go through okay. one by one. So transportation, I'll kind of, I've kind of been joking with the other boards, this is the one you want to jump for. We're in our second year of a five-year contract. I don't foresee it meeting unless something comes out of school start time, but I think a lot of things will be there. Um, policy, it meets right now currently the second Monday of every month, but that may not happen going forward because Berlin has made their has, has established their meeting time earlier in the afternoon. Um, so there's a, something we have to find. And one of the things we're going to do is once everyone's on these committees is conduct some doodle polls to say what are the best. Is that a monthly meeting? That is almost a monthly meeting. It, it, it probably two to three times a year it doesn't meet on a month. It didn't meet this month of March. School quality has been a meet, has been a subcommittee that's can been. You, a, can you back up a little, yeah. actually? Um, I'm I'm sorry to say that I, I have looked these up, but I'm still not fully aware of exactly what in the policy <coughs> committee does in particular. So one of the things that the that's a really good question, Alice, and I've been trying to figure that out for my five <laughs> and a half years here, because there's nothing that says what the policy committee should do. Okay. It, there. One of the things that's been lawless. in agreement. What? They're lawless. <laughs> <laughs> There's no charge. Let's how about we say that, Kevin? There's no charge. And I would like and it's actually one of the things you'll see in my report that I gave to the executive committee for tomorrow night is that I think they need to have more direction from this supervisory union board. One of the things they set for themselves four years ago was to use comp the common re there are twenty eight required policies in the state of Vermont by either the state or federal statute. And they said they would use, they would come to common policies on those for the first time and have them reviewed every five years. If there are two more to go this spring, they'll have that done. So that's things like kids have to be in school X number of days per year at X many hours per day. That, that's what you mean when you say 28 policies? Well, that, that, that's not, it's something like that. That's not a good example. That's a statute piece, but something would be like the hazing, harassment, and bullying. Okay. Or, um, 
animal dissection, believe it or not, is one that has to be a state, required state. <coughs> there are a few things that you might say, wait a minute. There are also, um, in the efficiency study, there was a call, there was a recommendation to look at having common policies across all boards. And so my, my question is, where are we on that? Um, and this group has, to accelerate their work, they have used the templates from the Vermont School Boards Association to use that, and they bring them to the supervisory union board to be adopted there. Um, and there are two more policies that I hope that will be finished this spring, and it will be the first time that we will be staying within the goal of that committee, which is to review all required policies every five years to make sure that we're up to date. Does that give you enough it on the It does, policy? thank you. Uh, transportation, we establish our transportation policy on how we provide transportation um, to the five towns. That committee does that work. Um, they, the past contract, the past couple, two times, they have just really done the contract negotiations um, and look for outside provider, which has been first student the past two times. They've been the low bidder um, for that. The actual workings of transportation in the SU is done through a transportation coordinator at the central office. Um, school quality is a committee that was started by U32 and has really been working on monitoring reports. How do we monitor the work that's going on in the schools? And my recommendation has been and, and have been putting all of this is that it really should be a supervisory union committee, not a U32 committee, because we're working on our monitoring together in different forms. I'll just say it that way. There could be a long discussion after that. The school start time is a committee that was established last year to look at school start time. We met prior to this meeting today. Um, that does not have consistency, but we're getting into a public forum, as you hopefully if everyone here has seen. There's a forum next Monday night. Please attend at U32. Scott will be leading some folks, Chris and will be as well, <laughs> through a discussion on school start time. Um, so we're looking at that, at that, and it's probably going to expand from not just school start time, but it's charged with that right now. The leadership team would like it to talk about length of day, calendar, and other things as well, because there's many things that go into that. Mm -hmm. So I hope, does that give you enough nope, else? And I'm, I'm sure. deliberately asking you because this <clears throat> yeah. is, some of this is new. No, so yeah, for sure. The transport, the school quality is meeting on Thursdays right now on the third Thursday of the month. Um, and that's what they're trying to do with that. Um, transportation doesn't have a set schedule. School start time is all over the map right now, and I don't mean that in a bad way. We just made a schedule to get the forums done to get to the point where we could have some really detailed forums to get some brainstorming done, and then to get to a survey to go out to all the community by the end of the school year to get some feedback based on the brainstorming that comes out of those sessions. So informally, look, listening to what Bill had to say and what I know about the committees, it sounds to me like the ones that at least are clear to me, policy, I think it makes sense for Chris because you would be the diversity of the group because you have opinions on policies and looking beyond the model. You know what I'm, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I think that would be helpful to that group. Um, school start time has a lot to do with community outreach, so I think that would be a good one for Allison if she was interested. Transportation I did before and would be happy to do again since they rarely meet. Um, school quality and negotiations I think are the ones that if everybody else agreed with my interpretation of those, those would be the ones that it, it would depend who was interested. I'd just like to say I'm also interested in policy, and I think Chris and I have sort of a similar take yeah, on Yeah, I, um, I could see that. So I could see that. Um, and, um, right? I'll do school quality. School quality, okay. Great. Um, I actually have a particular interest in the school start time, so that would awesome. work out really well. Yeah, and really, I would defer to you on that as well. Yeah, because Chris, you've been. Yeah. There's a ton of data. I don't I, like. I think it's really going to come down to how it happens and how people have a voice in it. So. 
Yeah, yeah, we're a member of a group mm -hmm. of a mm -hmm. national group at school. Oh, school. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of research. Yeah, some negotiations. But, but I would like whatever you have. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to move that um, for the moment we leave negotiations vacant, blank. Uh, that uh, we'll, we nominate Wood and Teach out uh, for um, representation on the policy committee. Uh, Carolyn May, uh, for, uh, as our representative on the transportation committee. Uh, Brian uh, Talley Farrell as our representative on the School Quality uh, Committee, and Allison Cornwall as our representative on the School Start Time Committee. Is there a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Would you, well, Chris, you and I can talk about it. Just making sure we get to, we're, we want to get to that negotiations. Yeah. We, yeah we sooner, sooner than later, but we don't need it tonight. Okay. And how, you said there would be a, uh, way to figure out the best times for people. Is that true for negotiations too, or it's more up to the negotiations? You bring in the associate, and this is this is just. I want to say this in the most collaborative way. It's the associations there, so we have to have everyone yeah. around the table to kind of figure out. My my at. recollection of it, I don't remember having any say in what the times were. I can't. I don't know if that's because I entered after they had started or. Sometimes the presidents and I and the <laughs> chairs of the negotiation or who we think is going to be chair of the negotiations for the board kind of sit yeah, down that and try to figure that out. out. But we don't do that until there's been letters exchanged saying we're willing to negotiate, and that usually doesn't happen until October. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you have to know who the players are. Okay. So we'll I, I, think, I, I think we're going to need to be in June with a rep. Okay. Yeah, I, I think going anything past there would be issues. Okay, so the, issues. the last piece of reorganization is to appoint a truant officer? And that's always the, has always been, I shouldn't say always is, always been the principal. Okay, then I would nominate Amy Toth as our truant officer for this year. One second. Okay, I need discussion. Sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now we're down to the consent agenda. May um, I ask you something? Chris? Sure. Do you want to go back up to 1.0? Um, yes, thank you. Uh, so we received our guests, uh, and thank you all again for coming. Um, are there any agenda revisions? I was hoping to move a point timekeeper from 1.4 down to, re to board reorganization so that it's a role that is consistent and we don't have to do it every meeting. Okay. Does anyone I would like to be the time keeper. <laughs> 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 Thanks. Um, yeah. In terms of agenda religion, religion items, um, Chris, you mentioned that there's a gender religion revisions. I would love to have a moment where we talk about maybe doing a um, what's it called? A statement of appreciation for our bus drivers. I know it's been a pretty rough mm. road lately. Agreed. Maybe do a resolution. A resolution, thank you. We can do that uh, during the uh, action agenda. Mm -hmm. Any others? Any other public comment or correspondence from anyone? I've gotten two or three um, communications from people about interested in gun um, yes. dis discussions about guns in schools. Okay, um, so we all got one from Katie Chabot. Um, and also, yeah, and also from uh, from Bush Forum. I think there's a reference to U32. Um, we passed the resolution. Passed the resolution. Last meeting. And East Montpelier yeah. passed one Monday night. So can and I, I have both those resolutions. Ours came okay. mostly from Montpelier, and we changed a little bit. But I, I, I have them. I don't have them in paper, but I have them electronically, and I can read them to you. And if that's something where you wanted to go, um, we could make it happen pretty quickly if you were so to adopt that resolution is or something you, similar. You, is there interest in? In reviewing it and discussing it tonight, or at our next board meeting, which is next week. The only reason to do it tonight is that there's legislation pending. Is that right? Yes, there is. Okay. There's discussions going on. We we've been sending that to our representatives, senators, gov governor, secretary of education, and the chairs of House and Senate Ed and Judiciary, because the talks and the students are hopefully done testifying. They've been going since 3 this afternoon down at the State House. And I know we had some students there tonight. Okay. 
Then I propose to move to our discussion agenda. Um, okay. uh, any other uh, amendments to the agenda? What now we were on public comments and correspondence. Okay. Any? No? Any none? Uh, so then we're down to uh, 3.1 uh, to approve the minutes from um, February 21, 2018. I, 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 I'd like to say something at some point, but it's not urgent. Oh, so. okay. We, yeah, uh, sorry, public comment. Public comment. <laughs> 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 Recognize <laughs> Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. So I, I just wanted to note that I, um, I, I'm here. I'm not sure why everyone else is here. It's great that everyone is here. Um, I'm here for uh, some specific reasons. Um, one is that uh, I've been going to every uh, local board, local district board meeting this month uh, to offer to answer any questions people might have about the Act 46 hearing. Particularly boards that didn't have a direct representative, um, you know, in that hearing. So I'd be happy to do that if that's of interest. Uh, the second thing is just to note that I think everyone is aware that Stephen Look uh, is term limited in his role as the chair of the WCSU board, and so we'll step down uh, next week Wednesday. And it's my intent to stand for that position if mm -hmm. nominated. And so I just wanted to let everyone know that and ask for your support. I'm happy to answer questions about that too. Uh, and then the third reason is that, uh, you know, kind of coming out of a lot of the conversations that we've had over the last two, three years, um, I find that I have a strong interest in how the boards of Washington Central can work more effectively together. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's, I've made a commitment to attending uh, every board meeting at least three times a year. I may be able to do it more than that. I can't commit to more than that. Um, and you know the, the reason really is that is to try to see how we can work more effectively together as a system. Um, so it's a pleasure to, to be here for that reason. I appreciate your tolerating my presence. Thank you. Um, uh, <laughs> it's been a fascinating process actually to, to join all the boards. Um, it's been really enjoyable, and I, I conscripted Scott sort of, although he, he you know he did agree. Um, to, uh, to come to the last couple uh, that I've been to. So. And Scott was also one of the representatives meeting with the AOE. He was, that's mm -hmm. correct. And yeah. so um, you, we can take that up now if anyone has any questions about how that meeting went. Um, yeah, I had said to Matt that I felt his email was really clear. Um, it might be worthwhile to add his email to the minutes mm -hmm. so that everybody can read it. It makes. Um, it, it's just a really clear, it, I felt like I could totally picture the meeting and exactly how it went, so thank you. Are you still on the executive committee? I am. Great. You said that you are formulating ideas on how boards may work together better or that you have those ideas? I'm interested in the topic, for sure, and I thought it just seemed to me that uh, necessary, I guess, to try to get out and see uh, all the boards and kind of what they're concerned with and what their priorities are and, and uh, you know, how they work together and, um, yeah, just what's happening at each school. And I didn't really feel like I had enough of a good sense of that to be able to speak to maybe what are some ways we might be able to, to work uh, together better. I'm sure I'll have ideas, but, um, but not I am, you know, sort of putting forward right now. So. Okay. And Matt, why on earth do you want to be chair of the SU board? You know, I, <laughs> you're the first person to ask me that question. Um, Other than your wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, I have asked myself that question a few times. Um, I think it's because having chaired the Act 46 committee from September to December, um, you know, I found that I really enjoyed it, strangely enough, uh, and, you know, felt that um, that was a really tough job to do, and I was able to do it. I guess. Um, and I also, you know, to be honest, I have become more and more convinced that um, having three of my own kids come through the system, you know, I'm more and more convinced that um, this, is, this is one system and they are all our kids. And that our, each student's ability to, to learn and to thrive in the classroom depends in some part on their peers and the extent to which each kid is being, um, you know, nurtured and cultivated and given opportunities to grow and to learn to, to become their best selves. And 
And so that gives us an inherent interest, I think, in what's happening at, at all five mm -hmm. elementary schools, as well as uh, what happens when they come together at, at U32. Um, and so I feel like it's, you know, that, that's a role. Um, you know, it's just the chair of the, I don't want to make it up to be more than it is. Um, it's just facilitating the DSU board. Um, but I felt like if there was a position where I could, you know, invest some time and thinking into that, that that's a good one. Thanks. Any other questions at this time? Thank you very much. Uh, both uh, uh, you and Scott and, and everyone who's come to uh, just spend time with us. We really appreciate it. Um, so now we're down to uh, consent agenda uh, and to approve the minutes. Any comments uh, or corrections on the minutes? No, I have. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get to that page. Um, uh, the very it's the second line of 3.2.1, um, where it starts, the board wants to be responsible. Uh, I would suggest that it be reworded to the proposed po uh, policy. Uh, no, let's see, how do I have this? Um, the proposed policy wants the board to be responsible. I think that's a more accurate reflection. See, and I would, I, I would look at the policy since that, because I marked that as well, that, that particular section, and I marked a couple other ones that, that I didn't, but let's finish with that one. Um, I think the, the policy is designed to be a stopgap measure, not that the board would take over whether to put the principal on administrative leave. It was stopgap. So um, I think that does not accurately reflect. Uh, maybe that's what it reflects Pietro said. Um, and if that's the minutes are, if, I don't recall whether he said it that bluntly uh, or not. Um, so. I just think it's important that we just draw the distinction between what the policy is suggesting versus what the mm -hmm. board. And I, yeah. I would support that. I, I agree that the board did not say that at, during that meeting. Um, you got that, Chris? Um, so. Okay. Any others? Um, you know, I guess so the other comment that I had is that uh, where it says Mr. Lynn wondered why the school would not want to remove the principal or other staff member if there was an immediate threat. This caused them some concern. And again, I don't think that was the sense of the comments, and it's not the sense of the policy. Um, so um, I don't think that that's an accurate reflection of the, of the uh, discussion. I, do, that, I, do, I think he said that. I don't think it's necessarily in the policy, but he did make that comment okay, of why then, would. OK, then, then it should stay, because it is, if it's reflecting what he said, I just didn't recall that. I, I remember very specifically, because it was a rhetorical question. Right. Yeah, I, I did right. consider right. answering I, I do remember him <laughs> saying that. I do remember different opinion on the board part, but I do remember him okay. saying that. <laughs> uh, any other comments on the, the minutes? Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, we're down to. Uh, we're here to meet now, Mr. Attendee. Thank you for your patience. Well, at my age, I added 45 minutes to my life expectancy. <laughs> 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 say, two or 45 minutes away. <laughs> but thank you. Um, yeah, you are emergency. Let just, me just, for the record, just identify who you are. Yeah, um, I'm Paul Otenti. I'm the emergency management coordinator for the town of Middlesex. Um, and the reason I'm here. As part of my job, it's um, I have to develop some emergency plans for the town. We have some in place. One of the ones we don't have in place is an evacuation plan. So we've started that process. The, the um, local planning committee has started that process. And we come to the line that says, identify your shelter. So I asked. I said, so what's our shelter? And then everybody said to me, we think it's the school. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, but we can't think. We have to know. So, 
I've been new to town, even though I don't I don't live here yet, but I will soon, I hope, this year. Um, but I don't know the history that's uh, evolved, but I've been told that somewhere along the line, there was some renovation done here, and part of that money came from the town, the generator, and some other things, and the trade-off was this would be, become the shelter. So maybe you can enlighten me on that. And um, so I'd like to pursue this. And let's get it set up. Um, I can answer all, any questions. We can resolve any issues. Um, I'd really like to get it set up so we have a place identified. And this is not going to be the Superdome in New Orleans, okay? The chances of us opening this as a shelter are the possibilities there, the probability is pretty slim. Okay? And even if we do, it's, um, there's not going to be like the whole town coming here or hundreds of people from other towns. Um, this would be more of a short-term situation where we open it because we've got a storm going and we need to move some people. The big problem is Three Vile Bridge Road with the flooding. We need to move people out of there, get them somewhere for the night. Uh, and then they can make other plans. A lot of people, when we evacuate them ahead of time, have other places to go anyways, you know? Um, the last thing they wanna do is throw a sleeping bag on the gymnasium floor if they have family members to go to. Having said that, of course, we could always have something huge that uh, is a different story. Um, but then again, if we have a big event in town or in the state, you have a state declared emergency, you might have a federal declared emergency, um, then there are other provisions. If people are gonna be uh, out of their homes for long term, they're not staying in the school. They're being set up somewhere else. So. So my recall is that during the renovation project, we did have discussion about. Um, yeah, I just don't think it ever got formalized, Chris, but I, but we have the, I mean, we have the capacity here with the, with that generator sitting out back, it can run this place. Okay, so then, so then, well, so part of the question that I have is, um, if the school became officially designated as a shelter uh, and there became a need, uh, what does that mean in terms of um, school functioning and authority over the, over the building itself? Does the, is there a, an expectation that um, whoever the emergency manager, if it's you or someone else comes over and has authority over the building and how it operates, or is that our authority still rests with the principal and the superintendent? Um, if there is a clear answer to that. I'm going to use the term, <laughs> it depends. Um, one thing we're going to do uh, as we move forward with this, we're going to come in and, um, and when I say we, I'm looking at maybe the custodian, the principal, someone who knows the school well, um, the fire, so a representative from the fire department, myself, and we would do an evaluation of the, the building. Does it have everything we need, which we, it kind of does, it has the kitchen, um, you know, this heat, there's the generator, um, the uh, bathrooms and stuff like that. But we'd be looking at what's the capacity, because that's going to be important. How many people could we house here? Because mm -hmm. we don't, we want to know that limit. Cause, and, and that could be based on just how many bathrooms they are, but it could also be based on how much available space that we would want people moving in because we don't want them running through the whole school. Um, so, to answer the question about like where the responsibility lies, I think that's a collaborative effort between the emergency management folks, um, whether it's uh, Peter Hood is the director, the emergency management director, myself as the uh, coordinator. Uh, I think it's collaborative between the school, and I'll say emergency management, um, to work together to understand what both of our needs are and say, okay, this, without knowing, if you haven't done this before, it can be kind of overwhelming thinking that, oh boy, they're gonna just you know throw open the doors and let people run in. And it's not done that way. We, um, we will we'll plan to develop uh, volunteers who will be trained as shelter managers. So when we realize we've got to open a shelter, whatever that, procedure that we develop says who do we call whether we call the principal the superintendent the school board the custodian we'll get the school open but we'll also contact our volunteers 
um, people from our community who will be trained to be the positions in, in the shelter, the shelter manager, the receptionist, uh, kitchen staff. You know, we'll probably rely on someone who's working the kitchen now to be able to open that up and, and use the equipment properly as opposed to just let anybody touch your kitchen equipment, you know? I mean, we still have that asset that we need to protect. Um, custodian would be great to have on board because he knows where the light switches are and all that good stuff if something goes wrong. Uh, so it, we can figure out ultimately who has the, the final say and, and the responsibility. Um, I think it's a collaborative effort where it's a community in need. And, you know, at that point in time, we're just looking out for the best of the, the residents. Would we be able to operate the school? I mean, if school was able to be in session that day. So can and I speak to this a bit? We yeah. at Berlin and East Montpelier now, but Ber East Montpelier was not the evacuation site for Irene, but Berlin was. We've had Berlin activated once since then. Um, I can't remember if Doty is. Do you remember, Matt? I don't know. Um, Callis is, the school is because of the generator there. Um, are the evacuation, are the emergency management sites for those schools? If we're in that type of situation, we're not having school. I mean, that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have school for it, something like that. So when I think about operation of school, I think we're in two different places, frankly. And well, I, if he talks about the biggest problem being a flood and a few, I don't know how many people are affected on Three Mile Bridge Road, if that's the most common likelihood, then it's likely that school would be in session. Not necessarily. We we lost we've lost like Berlin. We had to close down school, and this is all before I was here. But we had to shut down the school because we were losing a quarter of the town. And three mile on three mile uh, bridge three mile bridge road. I know I know the road. I can't think of the name. Um, that the uh, you know that's not as much of Middlesex as as it was for Berlin. Um, but those are those are. I have, I would have a hard time thinking we would be in session, frankly, because we'd be losing parts well, of the town. Because we'd be safety. losing we'd be losing culverts all over the place. Oh, I mean, if it's a water safe. thing, we we have we lose culverts around here. Yeah. But it, but, it, but it is a good question because that, that could happen. Um, back in was it January? We had they had to evacuate Three Mile Bridge Road. There's about 13 to 15 households down there. And uh, <laughs> do you live down there? I was like, your voice sounds so familiar from that 2 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me. No, 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 no. no that was somebody else. But, um, um, so, yeah, so we could end up in a situation where, because of the ice flows, the river rose, they had to evacuate folks. It was in the middle of the night. Some of the, you, a situation like that, Usually they have some place to go, some family or friends. But we might find out they don't. Yeah. And now the question is, do, do we open up the shelter and then will it impact school? We might have the agreement that says, you know what, we'll open the shelter if we can. You know, there might be a time when we can't. If it's for two or three people to come to the school, maybe we can find them some other place to go. We, we're not gonna open the shelter unless it's really needed to be open, mm -hmm. I guess is the question. Do you have volunteers to check on the very, very elderly who don't drive and other people pick up for other things? Is there a component in there? Not yet, but would you be interested? That's a good question. We're doing a couple of things. Um, part of the evacuation plan that we're developing, um, we're also going to target certain areas like three mile bridge row where they they're a trouble spot so we want to get to every resident and say give us some information how do we contact you you know how many kids do you have how many pets you got whatever the story is uh, so we're going to stop that we also want to get more citizens involved so that we can do some of these checks across town and with certain uh, target populations um, we do have a list as part of our local emergency plan. We do have a list of um, some of those populations that are vulnerable. The elderly, the folks that are disabled. Yeah, yeah. Now I have a question for you, Paul. Yeah. You have a response center, a place that everything in Middlesex to work out of. Another great question. 
<laughs> I was in Irene. I worked for the state during that. So we had a center that everything come out of. And you needed some place to, it's like a um, octopus. Yeah. Same idea is you need to be able to collect the information, but you the reason as a headquarters is it's there. Yeah. So anybody can see it. If you, your house and your house and your house and it doesn't work because you can't communicate. The cell phones don't work. I mean, we got big time problems that I know of that I got stuck with. You don't have access to everything. And without a means of communication, you don't know, you, and you're lost. Yeah. And, this, and my thing about the fire department down at the river blew my socks off. It's in a floodplain. <laughs> you don't build in a floodplain. I mean, I've, I've dug houses out, all kind of stuff. It's just not where you put a fire station. Well, that's um, fair, though. The, but the point, my point was <laughs> that if something happens, you have no other place to go. Yeah, okay. And so, if the equipment down there isn't available, it's down a river. Yeah. And there's it, a lot of money there. It, yes, there is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> here's where we're going with that. The, the committee, one of the committee's goals this year is to establish an emergency operations center. And they might be talking about. Um, we've looked at a couple of places to do that. And unfortunately or unfortunately, it depends how you look at it, it's going to be the firehouse. That's the place we have. What about the old firehouse? The I, think building. I think there's some issues with that. but Okay, um, I know there's a lot of issues. We looked into that one. Okay, that's fine. Um, but we are going to establish an emergency operations center. Um, we're looking for some grant funding right now to get things, simple things like whiteboards and. Um, some file cabinets, uh, a Maps. TV screen, computers. and yeah, we'll build that out as we go. Right now, we have nothing, but we need a spot where, whether it's a, uh, an emergency where we're evacuating people, it could be a lost citizen, a lost child. So, Paul, in terms of our part of this, could you um, just kind of list out um, in writing what you would need, uh, what you think the needs would be? Uh, for the school, um, and what type of um, personnel would have to be enlisted to help make a, an emergency shelter run, um, and what type of space requirements. So it sounds like you were going to come do a, a look around at some point, uh, and then just just so we know what we're talking about, the scope of what we are are uh, you are envisioning for uh, our school's participation as part of the community. Sure. I'd also like to say one of the great things about having a computer here is that FEMA has a sample school emergency operations plan. Bingo. Right? Um, and so maybe we can work with that. And I don't mind being triangulating. It sounds like Berlin may already have better established policies. Well, we can we, talk about that. But I'm, I'm happy to volunteer to, to be a point person on that. I, I would like a point person. So I can call you and say, hey, this How is can what we, we're okay. thinking. Great. Okay. Does that work for everybody else? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask that there's at least Amy or someone, one of the administrators here from the school, because there's, that's going to, that, frankly, that's what's happened at the other towns. It's gone right to the building administrator to be part of that because they know that they're building. Well, why don't we come up with a proposal and then and then you, you can in weigh in on it. Okay. Great. Yeah, when well, you actually, I'd like to be involved. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. When okay. the production. <laughs> any of oh, I didn't realize I was volunteering for a meeting. That changes things. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I do have so a can, meeting can, set can up I, with can I, Amy. I was going to say, why don't they do that? I can do it. That's great. Yeah. Why don't they do that? Sure. Yep. Amy, no, I don't, I don't have any need to be involved. Are you and Paul going to meet it? That's yeah, we already had a pre-existing That's meeting. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? a lot of safety stuff going on right now. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So we're moving forward with this. We, yeah. This is going to, we're going to be able to make this happen. I, I don't want to say absolutely, okay. but I would say yeah. probably, okay. high probably, high probably, yeah, high probably. Yeah, I'll, I'll Just because you know, it's you know, probably. it's the town. Does anybody asset. have any concerns? I mean, if, if does anybody have concerns that they can think of right now? The biggest one I do is people privacy, like student. Yeah, do you mean student privacy? Students okay. are the people yeah. who come. Okay. If we're if we're open, it's hard to be open and have students here at the same. Well, I mean, as a, an emergency shelter. Right. Yep. Okay, so, so I just want, I mean, I don't think it's insurmountable. I just know yeah. that when you asked about concerns, I was yeah. like, no, and that, that may be, 
it, it may be that if it's an emergency shelter, it's not a school at the same time. Right. I mean, just just because I was wondering about background yeah. checks and stuff like that. Yeah, well, that's where I am. Right. You know, right and, and you know, so it may be that if it the tough. emergency need is there, we have to suspend school. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just may be the. I mean, those, those are issues to look at. There's yeah. maybe a couple of different answers to, to do that. Um, I don't. You know, where Vermont's yeah, very, Vermont's very good. tight on people in the building. Yeah. Yeah. So it may, but if it's a, if it's that great a need. I mean, well, we're part of the community. Like I said, I, I understand that. Yeah. And, uh, in today's day and age, and it might be something that's... No, I, I think it can be figured out. It, it, yeah, I do too. I so what if we did this? Day. What if we um, had an agenda spot for you, not the next meeting, because that's only next week, but the one after that? The April meeting. Uh, April. Because then you wouldn't maybe we'll have met, and hopefully you'll have gone through the building. And, uh, together and have and work with Lord. I'm, I'm stepping out if you've already got oh, a pre arranging okay. thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah. one other thing I can think of is insurance. That's sort of a no brainer, right? Just making sure that the insurance. Yeah, our insurance. Which checks out. Already there. Okay. I have okay. a concern, but it's not really related to school. Like, is this really, I mean, this is the best facility for sure, but this is not the easiest place to get to, especially if you're coming from Three Mile Bridge Road in an emergency. So I don't know if they're going to. Backup shelter could be considered. There's no Some place. Excuse me. No more different than the fire station can't up, get up McCullough Hill. Well, just because that doesn't work out well doesn't mean that we should put our shelter in a we place that doesn't work out. Millions well. of dollars for a fire station. If your fire at your place or any place here, you don't see a fire until it's too late. It cannot yeah. make it. That's okay. why we pushed for widening. I pushed for widening the roads so we can get through it, and it's going to happen this year. Hopefully, Paul's working on that now. But okay. you put a station out here, you live here, and there's no graceful way to get here. Yeah. Right. So that's the other half of the problem. It is the highest spot, one of the higher spots. But any questions? Thank you. We've got to go through the low spots again. We, did, we yes. did look to every low spot. There is no. You, okay. Can, you have one anyway. Thank you very much. Next Thank up you. is our school Thank you. board Thank you. website and community outreach. And who's this? Was Allison's agenda item? Oh, yeah. I touched on this a little before when I said that I have an interest in, in doing this, but um, yeah, I mentioned that I, I really would like to try to make the board and the things that we're talking about more accessible to our community um, and give them a better chance to weigh in. And I say this because as a complete and total outsider as of several months ago, like I genuinely had trouble figuring out where to go and what everybody was talking about and when these things were going to be discussed. And, um, so I would like to work on that. It sounds like Bill is a good I one to talk to. You, before we leave, Janice, make sure you and I schedule a time. Okay, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Um, there's a lot I, of senior I, citizens taking away too with your analysis. in the back country. Yeah, it's not always easy to do. Maybe it's talking to the help, but can't. We'll try. Or yeah, can't. We'll make it work. Are uninformed. We're just talking about. about Making okay. updates okay. to the existing website, or are we talking yeah. about creating something new? We have a website, yeah. so, that's a, so let's, let's just. Yeah, I okay. think you and I can probably come up with something. We can share with some folks, and sure, we've got. We've been a proposal. A proposal. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And Bill, you had a comment about see, reach, reaching out to senior citizens. Yes, I. I'm all right. I'm a senior citizen. My wife's a senior citizen, but there's other people around here in the back country. That on our off our road, I live on East Hill. There's others in the back, hidden away, that really don't uh, know much about what's happening. I went around all the houses to get signed petitions so I can enlarge or widen McCullough Road. But other, they didn't even know what's going on. I mean, that they need to some way open the broader scope of these people to know what their town's doing. I mean, they're paying, they're hollering and moaning for high taxes. Well, hey, we're building roads, we're fixing roads, we're doing this, we're doing that. They don't have... They have no means of finding it out. They're not on front porch form. No. One don't even have a computer. Right. Yep. Okay, yep. you know, you need to figure out Just or look message. at it send some way. Snail phones mail. don't work, yeah. you know, phones don't work. Snail mail, I'm sorry, still is good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Computers don't work. And are you talking about work. specifically school board related stuff or all emergency I, town news? I think all. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Because the people need to understand where their money's going. Yeah, for sure. They moan and groan that they're paying higher taxes. Mm -hmm. They need it. Then there's no show for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they live off mile in the woods there, and you got to climb and you can't drive in because it's pretty rough. 
you need, you know, you and need to figure out. it's a resource for our school too. Chris alluded to it during the Meet the Candidate night, where there was members of the community that used to do a lot of outreach. Mm -hmm. And I think there's folks that are, like you just said, willing to help, but just are unaware of what's the happening need. or what's happening or how they can do that. Okay, so we'll, we'll focus on that. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Um, next up is the um, board retreat. Um, in the sense of getting over that for the moment and moving on to other items. I, uh, I have a question of why it's on here right now. Well, we had, uh, it was sort of on the template, and then you and I decided to take it off, but, um... Then you asked to put it back on, so I, it, it's fine with... Oh, I, would I like didn't, to, I don't remember I that. I would just like to ask to, um, wait till we get the calendar put out. Okay. Um, so I can be I was thinking that. Fiji. Yeah, yeah. Pause. <laughs> no? Fine. I just thought we had, um, okay. really advocated for one last year, and then it was decided not to have one, so I'm... Surprised to see it back on there. Okay, so I'm going to say we should move it to a future. Sure, um, perfect. Yep. Item. Okay. Yep. Uh, next up is uh, 5.0 reports to the board. Uh, um, we'll, have, we'll have verbal reports. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Verbal Hi, everybody. Hey. Um, so I've had quite a bit of work over the last couple of weeks uh, just in conjunction um, with some of the state. Uh, expectations around school safety. I've met with the barracks not once but twice um, in just evaluating kind of our current status and um, doing some prelim preliminary um, examinations of our current safety um, procedures. So that um, is in the works um, to address a lot of the community concerns, I think, around that. Um, uh, just making sure that we're hitting the right stance. So um, then I, I also have, uh, as you know, uh, had, you know, kind of an, another aspect of that is just our communication in some of those areas um, had a uh, coffee talk with parents last Friday around uh, snow time procedures and that type of thing. And, um, in preparation for our action review. So um, I feel like uh, positive things emerge from that, and I'll have further details uh, next week uh, on some of the other aspects of things that have been going on at the school. So more robust report next week. Okay. So the, uh, um, the state police involvement was because that of... Was mandated from the state. Mandated from the state, the not a result of community... No, 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 that, to be clear, that uh, came as an outflow of a lot of uh, the current events mm -hmm. um, and um, was basically direct, they were directed to get to every school in the state by Great. the end of the month. Good. So um, I, when I read that, uh, proactively reached out to them and I actually beat the checklist <laughs> to the first meeting, which is how we ended up with two meetings. Mm -hmm. um, but. Um, Anyways, it's, it's been a good beginning process to begin, uh, you know, pulling uh, Nate in uh, to examine some of the resources that are out there, um, just so that everybody's aware. You know, I think it, it does live in some of these larger safety and emergency situations. Um, and, you know, as was identified, it, there are specific challenges to taking something that's been maybe created, um, you know, by a federal entity and trying to translate it to the, to Vermont, given our topography and um, specific context. So we're um, doing our best to translate that to our specific context for the best of our kids. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? So I have, I, have a few, I have three items for you that I want to talk to you about. I want to give you an update on the action, after action review that we conducted Monday from the bus incident. Um, I need to talk to you about the oil tank. It's something that's come up, and Amy, I'm sorry, but literally Nate and I were talking at 4 o'clock this afternoon about the oil tank outside that's buried in the ground. Okay. You mean when I was in staff meeting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. just to be clear, everybody, I was still here. <laughs> no, I know, but I wasn't going to bother you with this. This is something that Nate and I can do. And then I need to inform you of a risk that the board has currently with the school district manager, school district treasurer. School district treasurer. Um, the after, We conducted the after action review on Monday, and I really want to uh, thank Amy for having a talk with the parents on Friday 
a lot of those pieces came in. Um, of the incident that happened on Tuesday afternoon with the buses, with the bus get, uh, losing traction on Molly Hill Road, two of them, or Molly, sorry, Molly Supple Road. Um, one of the, we've had some good, we had uh, Paul, I always forget Paul's last name. Service service. Service. Yeah. Thank you. I can have a hard time saying it too. Um, was there, Jen Mitchell was there from uh, First Student. Michelle Scott was our transportation coordinator. Uh, Alyssa and Amy, Alyssa Barracks, Amy were there from here from the building. Um, Paul and Krista Mativier from my office and I was there as well. Um, we really went down from what we expected to happen to what did happen. We have a long timeline. I don't have a full report for you right now. I'd be glad to give you what I have here. I've got copies of it. Um, what we came down to was it was more on communications. We, we have timelines that I think have been expressed. I tried to express them in my letter that I sent out to the community that happened. Um, if we're going to have a delay, we have to know by 11 in the morning, unfortunately, and the weather just turned on us. And that's happened three times this year that we've had weather turn from 12 to 1 o'clock. But we have to empty U32 first before we can empty the elementary schools because of the busing way we're set up with coordinating busing across the five towns. Um, so there's a, and to actually plow the roads ahead of time we need at least two and a half to three hours in front that the town crew knows to go with the plows and get out there before the buses hit the hit the routes. That's just uh, to have everything clear. I have a question about that. So, um, is it okay to ask now? Sure. Or will it ruin your flow? No. Um, I was under the impression, and I guess I was misinformed, that Vermont made the decision that schools either run for the whole day or they don't run at all. That's nope. inaccurate? That's inaccurate. There are some, um, I was actually that day looking to, I, I, between 10 and 11, I was on the phone with Roger Hill. Uh, I was at 11, at 10, I looked at the radar image I did again at 11. We were like, okay, it looks good. There's no intensity radar image. Um, we're predicted to have seven inches over three days. We look at snowfall rates and water concentration, what's coming down, and it all changed on us at 12 to 1 in the afternoon. And that happened to us the day before winter break, too. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we're going to reevaluate that again. Uh, Roger and I were talking about that Wednesday, the day after, um, and see how can we do better. We, I think we're depending probably too much on the technology, mm -hmm. and we get direct forecast from NOAA Weather Service, and as you know, Roger does forecasting for all the utilities in Vermont New Hampshire, and does micro-climate predictions mm -hmm. within the state. Um, so we use those in, um, all the time. We feel that, you know, the communication system, as Amy just mentioned, is what broke down on us on that, and we need to get that better. Um, we're going to get some better checklists on exactly where the communication comes from. <laughs> when an incident does happen. So, so when we were here on Friday, Paul had a um, good sense of when, when an incident, and he was talking, I think, specifically from when an event has happened, like yeah. an accident or buses off the road, um, that he um, um, is the person with the best information yep. because he's there and he, right. he nothing's going to happen without him in terms of moving right. a bus. Right. Um, and he, I guess he, he, I think he said, he should be the source uh, yep. of information to we you, agree with to that. Amy, yep. and to the bus company, not the drivers. Right. We agree with that. You know, so it, it, was, it yeah. was helpful to hear, actually, to have him. Yeah. There. I mean, we need, we need what we, we basically established, which we have for every other situation, mm -hmm. is an incident command system that we have in public safety. I'm familiar with it from my service on volunteer fire departments, and we need someone on the scene that can tell us what's going on. And we have one point of contact instead of multiple. Context. And that's the problem. We had multiple pieces of information coming in between bus drivers, from parents. I mean, everyone was trying to do their best and help us. It was mm -hmm. all a good, helpful place. And Paul, and Paul. And so what we did was we also are going to need to add some phone lines to this building, mm -hmm. and specifically one that people can't call in on. Mm -hmm. Our phone lines were literally tied up for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. We couldn't. The only way I got to Amy was through through the Wi-Fi. Was like she said she finally texted me. FaceTime me, you know, and that was the way we contacted that day. So those are things that we've learned. You know, those are some of the things we've learned. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at 
Um, you know, like I said, this is a rough draft right now. We're changing, you know, some procedures for the bus drivers to, and as I said in my letter, and as you said, what would you suggest to talk about a resolution for the bus driver? They're doing the best they can out there. It's a tough job. Um, so talking about, you know, just reiterating, we'd rather have kids late than a bus lose traction. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and that happened actually Thursday morning. Two buses just pulled over and said, when the sand truck can get here, we'll go again. Good. Which is the right call. Um, and so we're setting up a, a black, a clarity on the blackboard messaging protocol, and really that, that will come out. The bus barn knows right away when things are happening, so um, that things will come out of there, which they do. They have access to Blackboard to send out messages by routes by saying, hey, if it's U6 is delayed, it'll go out. And that already happens. It just didn't happen that day. It's just one of the other things that came up during this meeting was whether or not there can be different calls for different towns yeah. um, because, of, because of the different climates that are in them and, and the, the topography. I mean, not yeah. all the towns, I think, have the same. Right. So Definitely. right now we so can't we can't right now with the way we have the busing set up. If we wanted to get to more buses and have and talk about separating their busing or transportation and how we do that, we're all really tied to U thirty two. One of the other things that was kind of thrown out is whether to use the uh, most vulnerable um, town to make the call as opposed right. to seeing across the di across so, the because so, right so again, I have safety issue yeah right? so I, I want to tell you that I mean that morning that at you know at 11 we were talking with all the all the town crews mm -hmm. and the town crews were like we're ready to go and it just switched and that I mean Paul and I've had that conversation already he's like yeah when we went to make the call it was there mm -hmm. and it's it's the the problem is the system and stopping and starting the system is not instantaneous. Besides saying to a driver, just stop where you're at. But so. hypothetically, if Middlesex said, we're good to go, and Berlin said, we're good to go, and East Montpelier said, we're good to go, mm -hmm. and Worcester said, we have some back roads that this is not going to make. And I've, you stopped, would, I've stopped it. You would close for yeah, everybody. We, we shut everyone down. Yeah. I've done that. Okay. Yeah. And there have been many days where I get three good and two no, or one no and four good. You know, we, we're talking on the radio. I'm, I'm on the phone with Roger Hill, and he's got the radio right there, and I'm talking to the guys in the trucks at 5. But the problem is we make the call. Mm -hmm. I have to make the call at 5.30 in the morning for buses going all the way to 9 o'clock. And so, and the same thing is true for the afternoon. It's, it's the stopping and starting of the system mm -hmm. that is really hard to do. Whenever, if I said at... Two in the uh, pick a time that you know is two to three hours from either end of the day, and I say, okay, we're ready to shut down. It takes an hour and a half to get the buses to U32. U32 has to go first. U32 empties. It takes. It's not going to take an hour to do the routes like it usually does. It's probably going to take an hour and a half. So we're going to be late <coughs> to the elementary schools, and then the elementary schools empty. So it's that. It's like a three hour from when that window goes and Michelle Sepka who's a wizard with our software trying to figure out how to shorten all this yeah. it seems like it's something we look at every two to three years like how do you shorten this without adding more buses and more Buy drivers snow cap buses clearly <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know this, this is maybe a discussion for another time I guess it's more of an observation but it sounds like a lot of time and energy and resources is being expended on trying to manage this process which I know it's part of you know the education system in a way but to the extent of the sophistication and like the kind of micro trying to, to manage this I'm just wondering if it's the best use of our collective resources um, you know or we should be just looking long term you know what we're gonna have these days where it just doesn't make sense to have school, maybe we should relook at the calendar and think about uh, knowing we're going to lose day somewhere uh, else. Uh, let's pick them up here. Uh, yeah. So that that is done. I will tell you that I've talked to colleagues that are in New Hampshire right now. They're losing their April vacation. They're going to school for April vacation in New Hampshire right now. So they don't won't have April vacation. How many kids will they have in school? I don't know. That's what. <laughs> they're wondering mm -hmm. you know um, at U32 we have a definite one of the hard dates that's sitting there is graduation 
one of the questions I'm going to have for the executive committee and the SU board, because we have to adopt a calendar, is can we stop saying from the day of, you know, when we have graduation, which is June 15th, I believe, Scott, maybe you can remember. But I know it's, we're out further than we ever have been before because of what I've experienced in snow days. We went out another week. Can we go to graduation another week later because people are buying their plane tickets the summer before the next year? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it's that pressure. There has to be 175 days for graduation. And so I, I think what you, that's a long answer to Brian, to you to say, yes, we should be thinking about that, about how we have that and what that does, you know, where's our community? Because I think we really should look overall at the whole calendar. I'm not, I, I think the way we're running our calendar now is so much built on tradition that it's not great for education, frankly. I think there are better ways to do our calendar overall for schools. But remember, we have to have 175 days in common with the Barry Technical Center. So it's not just our issue, it's five that we've, we've got to have moved. One of our audience members had a comment. Um, go ahead. Yes, thank you. Go ahead, please. Uh, you're talking about buses and uh, an organization of getting that young that man t talked about. Um, I'm sure you've talked about gun safety, have you? Oh, a lot. Lately. Okay. <laughs> so the buses are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I was watching the news about uh, Great Mills, where I taught a long time ago. And there, the buses were right there. And they took the students right to a designated other school. What is the plan for this? So you're talking about an evacuation from this school? Yeah. So I know that Amy's working on an evacuation plan from this school. The unfortunate piece is in many of our element, in our rural elementary schools in Vermont, there is not a place to evacuate to. And for right here, the, probably the closest place is the firehouse up yeah. the yeah. road. The firehouse slash town garage up the road. And then we think Which this time of year. It's hard to get there. Same well, and, and the if, length of time to get a bus here. Yeah, Some you're not going to get a bus here fast parked. enough. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Some haven't put, have, have parked on, on site. Um, I mean, those are those are all things we can we can look at. But yeah. it, it's going it, to what it comes down to is it, I think the analysis the boards do all the time around all risk and dirt people. cost. They're all about roundabout. Yeah, and, and some things have small risk but large effect, yeah. and some have. Large risk, but minor effect. So those are the things that have to be looked at. Right. It's a, it's so that's first thing. Sorry, it took a little longer than that, but I knew that people would want to hear about. And I told, and I said in my letter that you would all get a final report. So I wanted to give you an initial where we're at today with what we've learned. Um, oil. Oil tank. That oil tank appears to be from 1971. That's out there in the ground. You know what? I, I can tell you. I thought. I so thought I was going to ask you specifically, Chris. I, I thought we even had a grant that replaced that oil tank uh, within the past 10 years, is my recollection. That's what I thought, too. So we may found right some. Right outside the, where the library yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we. Um, and they removed the tank that had been there for really long. Time. So this is why, I mean, this is why maybe you and I should talk more after this. Okay. Or, um, because I was wanted to tap your yeah, yeah. your historical knowledge. We can see something from 2008 that a report assessment was done that told us to replace the tank then. Yeah. We can see that that the tank was moved originally from the old library renovation to its existing <laughs> spot then, mm -hmm. and that was done in the 80s. Yeah. Um, but in what was we've been looking at the boiler replacement. Roy said to us, hey, we just did a boiler replacement in Berlin, and you frankly needed a tank there. Do you need one at Romney? Mm -hmm. And we're trying to answer that question. Would the minutes have this? No, we don't have minutes. We only have minutes back like seven years, so we're, you don't have to keep it that long. <laughs> but <laughs> records on equipment, we don't. So let's just say that in all schools in Vermont, historical records of renovations and yeah. equipment are not great. Yeah. Agreed. And that's not that's not just a Washington Central issue. That's mm -hmm. everywhere. Okay. Um, so we're trying to investigate that. But I wanted to actually, I really wanted to talk to you. And moving <laughs> forward, we've got we would have records. We have our digital. Everything else is digitized now. from this renovation on. Great. Amy and maybe so, so actually, not from the renovation, from Amy's and Is Nate's there nothing wrong program. with the tank? 
we've got. So we don't think there is, there. but the question is if that's a single wall tank. I seem to think how much risk, and this is where this goes back to what we were just talking about, and this is a I'm, we need board input is yeah, risk versus exposure. Okay. I thought okay. I I, I thought it was replaced. Well, Roy seems to think it's a, from his initial investigation. It's still a single wall tank. So. Which means it probably wasn't replaced ten years ago. Exactly, because double, double wall well, yeah, tanks double are wall. quite a while. Yeah. And I put, remember double wall discussion yeah. about double wall. I just don't know if it was done. Yeah. Okay. So I can't. So I want yeah. to talk to you some more. The last one is unfortunately I need to inform you in open session that your school district treasurer well, is resisting to be bonded as it, as your treasurer. We put in a third notice to that person that they need to be bonded. It, it's your it's the insurance that you purchase yeah. as a board, but they're hesitant to do it. And okay. what does that mean, bonding? It means that if they do something wrong with money yeah. for the middle set school district, that they're covered by insurance for insurance. misappropriating funds. So is it like a an insurance it's policy like an, or is it a it's an insurance policy kind of that covers that covers your treasurer thing? for doing something wrong okay. or fraudulent. Okay. And it does mean that you have to give over personal identifiable information. Got it. Okay. Um, it's the town the town's treasurer? Town's treasurer, so the school treasurer. Okay. And so I may be asking you to appoint someone different at the next meeting. We're so that's the problem, is that this person does not wish to give personal identifiable information? Is from what I understand. Lori Bebo has been working with her. We've sent a third letter, but it's my responsibility as your superintendent to say that you're at risk right now without having insurance liability coverage and being your school treasurer being bonded. Okay. It's not one I wanted to tell you, but I, no, I need no, to tell you that. Okay. Yeah. Can I just make sure I understand? You said Lori has been in contact with this yes, person? Yes, three times. On the phone or has sent email communications or something? And certified letter. Okay, so she all ever, three. All three. Phone. And she's right. actually reached her on the phone? Yep. Okay, so it's not like the person just has somehow missed this. Okay. Does not want to. That seems clear. Well, it seems to think that they don't need to, and we've shown them the statute in law that says they must. Okay. Is any cost to the driver? None. It's all None covered by us. Yeah. Is there a time for general public comment at a board meeting? If, if there's a, uh, normally we have that at the beginning. Um, Sorry. If there's a topic that arises that you want to it, comment It's just on. an observation that I had and a question that I have. I have to leave shortly. I have to pick up one of my kids. So if Brian's statistic is correct that there have been 40 votes and only three of them were three to two, we just witnessed another two of them tonight. <laughs> and as a new board, I would just bring awareness to that as to the precedent yeah. that you may be setting or the groundwork that you may be laying okay, for the work you're about to do together. My second question is relative to the way one of those three to two votes was described, that there was a code of ethics that didn't pass. And I was just curious what the backstory to that is or what date that happened on so I could revisit the minutes or watch on CAX. To January. clarify, it did pass. <clears throat> oh, it did. But it did three, pass three to two. voted for it. Two, two voted against. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. And, and it, it was basically a personal to the individual board members personally. Uh, and I voted against it, saying I didn't think that we had issues that would require a code of ethics. Um, and it basically you know, dealt with like um, conflict of interest and things like that. So you should read. And how we conduct ourselves as board members yeah. in public settings. So you settings. should read what code of ethics means um, in, in terms of the policy. Because it's probably. I our, reviewed the um, policy because I heard about the policy. I didn't realize it was one of the standoff votes, so to speak. It mm -hmm. happened last, I would look at last April. No, we, we didn't vote on it until like January. 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 Yeah. 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 Oh, was it I would later? Say, I would say it was shame. But it came up it a year ago. It was in two It initially was one of those. Yeah. <laughs> and we passed on back. it first. <laughs> so I would encourage you to look and Thanks. give you more information about it. Okay. Um, Thank you. Any more for you, Bill? Uh, I just want to say... I've been saying this at every meeting. Uh, students always make me proud to be superintendent. 
our students at U32 in the past month have been one of the proudest times to be an educator. And I'll leave it at that. Well, fill that out a little bit. Just well, the problem, the problem is if I do, I can be making a political statement that I can't as a superintendent. We want to talk about the skills they, ex they exhibit. They, so they, showed, they showed the mission which you adopted, which is to be empowered, creative, and passionate to be local and global citizens. And they are demonstrating that. And there are a few that, when I was with Scott and Adrian, one, two in particular, that I would have given them a diploma that night. <laughs> and hopefully, Scott, you concur. I agree completely. And they are telling the adults to stay out of it and let us do this ourselves. Okay. And they are learning. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so we're in 5.2, fiscal. Any fiscal reports? Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Not no. paying attention. No um, on page 8, you will see the current fiscal report for the Middlesex School District. Um, currently, there are two things that were in March. We had a little bit more special education reimbursement. And we had a little bit more special education cost, but the reimbursement was greater than the cost. So really, it's less than about a $600 change to the, gen the projected general fund balance. Remember, this is a projection. And Allison, we'll get, uh, we usually have a time for new board members to go through financial reporting to see all the, to learn the details of how we do this. Great. Not that you can't read it, it's just, it's kind of just like, what is Lori putting together here? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, that's working really, um, you know, we're right in about the same place we've been. We're a little bit underneath the 4% projection we like to be at, uh, but we're much better than where we started the year. Okay. So. Um, we're also, uh, your building maintenance is very healthy, and the thing I should have added to my report that I'm going to sneak in right now, Chris, in two minutes, is that Bill Ford's working with us. We're about to go out to bids for a roofing, boiler, and some uh, an embedded type of system that we've been using at Berlin that would go into the lobby for cleaning boots, boots and sneakers and to cut down the slipperiness on the floors. We're finding the walk-off mats do not work uh, as well as we'd like. And if you were in Berlin right now, you'd see this new carpet that looks like a Brillo pad. Mm -hmm. And it can be extracted, so you can extract all of the, and we're putting them in Dodi and Callus too. And they're just, they, it's a lot safer for the kids. And uh, it's really, it's gonna add life to our floor and how long they'll, they'll live. That's why I'm keep dirt out of the building. So, and we're plenty healthy in that fund. Great. So that's Any my. updates on the roof leak and if, mold was I have uh, explored not uh, heard back about the mold but the roof leaks have been you know we lost some some of the I think cover up there and then regained it so got it you know, I think we're still in winter friends so yeah. is, you know, we've not had roof? active leak yeah so them. let me go right. a little bit more we're in rubber roof um, the leaks are happening around either the seams or where there are uh, Punctures is the best way. It's not a puncture, but where there's a break in the in the ceiling, where you either have a drain coming down that's collecting the the, the runoff water, or a vent pipe goes up, and it was found not to be properly sealed. I think we reported that to you last time. Um, they're going to come back and take care of that. Uh, we as soon as this started, we entered an insurance claim, so our insurance company is up to speed on this. Uh, they have all the warranty information and everything, so it's in their hands to recoup any cost, as it is with most things that happen for us. Um, so the insurance company, our insurance company, is is up to speed on that. So we see insurance company. Uh, oh, I just want to say, so my partner's a roofer. He was curious about it. He looked at it. And he said he has put in roofs like that, and the instructions are actually wrong for northern climates because they don't <laughs> take into account, right? <laughs> so, um, so he's, wrong. you know, I'm, I don't know the details. I'm the worst person to translate, but I'm sure he'd be happy to talk to anybody who wants to talk to him. Yeah, I think we have a mule hide who guarantees the roof. Uh, the company that put it, that was a subcontractor that put it in, is no longer in business. Uh, mule hide, they are coming back as soon as that roof is cleared, and they're going to go through it. And they own they own the warranty, so they, they if they keep coming back, now their warranty only covers the roof itself. It doesn't cover the subcontractor. It no it cover the walls. It doesn't cover the damage in the walls. Okay. So our insurance company will take care of any of that, and then they'll be the ones if they're looking to recoup costs, 
to go from there. Yeah, so I, I thought uh, uh, that there was a problem with the structure um, that subcontractor put together that hadn't done it adequately. It's um, not the structure, it's just the roof itself. And that company is no longer in existence. Okay, but the, my understanding was that the subcontractor didn't do a good job. That's what I'm saying. We're, That's we're in agreement. Okay, but, but Mulehide, they're Mule not, the one who warranties it. They're the contract. They're, they're the roofing contract. So what happens is there are plenty of roofers out there, right? Mm -hmm. So you use a, a material to put down the roof. The subcontractor doesn't give you the warranty. It's actually the, the way you get so warranties on big roofs like this is from the actual manufacturer of the of product. The, of the product. They send up their own inspector after it's been in put in place to say, did the subcontractor do it to our standard? Yeah. So we'll warranty it. They did that, supposedly. Yeah. I actually know it. they were here. I question how they actually looked at it. Um, but so Mulehide, who owns the membrane, is warranting the roof. Okay. And so they have to send someone up. They took someone out of Maryland to come here when we get a lot of screaming. And I, there was some literal. Um, and that we got some up here, and then he's like, I didn't realize that I was coming to where there's a foot of snow on the roof. And it's not snow, it's three inches of snow, and the rest mm -hmm. of it's ice. He said, so we'll damage this whole thing if we have to chop through it. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'll come. He left materials here. He said, as soon as it's clear, call me. I'll come up and go through it because what Mulehide doesn't want to do is keep sending someone here. It's costing them. <laughs> so they and they they recognize the issue. Uh, I once they did get mobilized, which took a little bit, they've been good since. Now we're chasing water. Um, I I haven't talked to Nate either, but I kind of left it with Nate when he poked a hole in that wall. Was let me know if you find something, but I don't hear anything. I'm assuming it's good. I will follow up on. But that you can follow up on that with me. Okay. Um, I. Who hired the subcontractor? Uh, the GC, and that's the right of the general contractor. When yep. you do a general contract project, they they do that work. And they, it's, and they don't hold any liability. They don't yes. hold any liability. The 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 warrant. That's the, unfortunately the, way the warranty is is written. It's part of what we buy into that, unless we pay more into that. And uh, Chris and Brian, I think you were both on the board at the time when we were right-sizing the construction. And it didn't affect really the roof um, that I recall. Well, we did end up going with, I think, a different roof design. Well, we took, we were trying to get flat everywhere, and we kept the dog, the dog shed roof, or the doghouse roof that we have. And we didn't do some other roofs, which were going to be the primary and the gym, which we're looking to do this summer. Um, any other questions? No? Okay. So we are down to uh, our uh, action agenda. Uh, well, actually, in our discussion agenda, we did not talk about a resolution for the bus drivers. So I'm going to like sure, I'll, I'll a resolution. sort of draft, uh, say something verbal, and you can sure. um, chime in. Um, the Remedy School Board um, resolves to thank the bus drivers, um, and I don't know everybody's last name. Jerry? Just, just say their first name. Okay. Okay, Jerry. Who's driving for Charlie these days? Charlie? Charlie is. Is Charlie there? I think he is, isn't he? Uh, He's not doing late I, bus. M Mr. Malone's been doing a great job of handling buses. I didn't know that if that Charlie <laughs> there. Yeah. Frankly. So. Wait, he's not doing the late bus, I know, but and he has in the past. I heard he had health okay. issues. So yeah. Jerry, um Gil. 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 And either Charlie or could you find out that, that for us, Amy? We can we can we can add that in. Okay. Um, so the Remy School Board was to thank them for um, getting children um, to school and back safely in a very challenging set of circumstances. It's not very flowery. No. Add something, Caroline. <laughs> That's how I like it. It's not flowery. <laughs> Straight into the point. Uh, a second, then. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much for it. Um, and do we get that to them somehow? Or? Yeah, we'll take that. Okay. So we'll get that to them. Okay. From all CCU, so you have a copy of what's sent to them. Okay. It may take a day or two. So we're on to our action agenda, and we have uh, 6.1 award of the playground bid, which was part of our board packet. Is there a motion? And then we can have a discussion. 
So yes. You can just move that. I move that we award the bid to um, Tom Pan Equipment. Um, as I, I move that we do that thing that you just said. We award the <laughs> bid for the playground to Tom Pan Equipment. So I'll send if you want to learn quickly. It's so moved. So moved. <laughs> <laughs> do we have to put the amounts in? So this is a bit that we wanted to talk to you about. That's why you see this. So we have some questions there. No. That's so why we, we see what? Need that. You'll see if you look on page 11. Yeah. Is there are different amounts. Costs and based on what we want. To what you'd like to it. do. Um, the equipment only is 20000 The And Amy, please jump in here. The company installs all the equipment, so if they do it outright, it's 9000 I would actually ex recommend, from my experience in doing playgrounds, that it's a great community volunteer that helps with community engagement. Mm -hmm. That you go to the next one down below, which is four thousand, where they supervise. It means a little bit of we'll need some help getting everyone together, but I think it's a great community activity. Is it weekend? They can do it on the weekend. Yeah, they come in. Yeah, they help. Okay. I, I we're going we're actually talking to them tomorrow. Um, the next one. So those two that at least though, if we number these one and three would be my recommendation. The next thing is wood chips with borders or wood chips flush with ground. We think there can be another alternative for covering. It's going to cost us, but we may not need to buy the wood chips straight from them. There are certain type of chips that are regulated that you have to have in a playground. It's not just go get <laughs> some wood chips mm -hmm. from the local sawmill. They have to be a certain shape and size and all that that is actually regulated. So, uh, but we think we might be able to find a better place than from the contractor because we've done them before. We refresh the wood chips like every two years around this. You mean a cheaper <laughs> option? A cheaper option. How cheaper? I don't know right now, Brian, but when I saw that price. Wait, are they, um, so, but then we would have to build borders, I'm assuming, if we went with some, that. Some, some of our schools don't do that. Catalyst well, does not we have don't board. currently have. Know. Borders are the borders more dangerous in terms of trip hazards? I think you could trip, right? That's what I'm asking. Some well, places have them, some places don't. I mean, if we want it to keeps the wood sand, chips higher, palace. which is what provides them safety. Also, but it prov okay. Yeah. So, do you have, I mean, a, do you have them around the existing toys, or, uh, you know, to play stuff now? You got it. You've been doing that. You built that. We. I thought. What do we have? We had stone. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You built right. It's get to the point where you can't have peace stone anymore. You can't, okay. Do you have any safety data? I mm -hmm. have not looked at this. Do you um, Do you know, either of you offhand, as to what is the safest material? Yes, the rubber mats are rubber. Be very expensive that you might see in an urban setting. And, and the rubber mats are, um, so I don't have a good feel for cost, but the replacement rate? I have no idea. Okay. No, so we, we've never looked at them because, frankly, because of our climate, wood chips is what we've been doing at all the elementary schools. And there are there any other options besides wood chips? I mean, sand, I would assume? No. 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 It's either it's, it's wood chips or the rubberized mats. Wood chips or mats, okay. We currently have pea stone. And we currently have pea stone, which we get away with, but we really shouldn't be using Your it. Your grandfather, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Well, but if you do that, then you can replace them all and you can cover yourself. So replace the, the pea stone with wood chips, and you got, then you got your supply. If you need more, you'll have it. Because you're going to have to replace not replace it, but re you have to re re it. reinstate you have to it for the elevation mm -hmm. you need. Yeah. To That's why I said like it's, it's been two years. It's mm -hmm. about every two years. Todd uh, Hill and Chuck Buck had two heads of custodian, one at Berlin, one at um, East Mount Pair, both certified playground inspectors for us, and they do this. For, the guys just do it. I mean, I, so ours was replenished this last year for the zones that we have. The stones, or the the, st the stones were. Mm -hmm. Should we have a sense of overall? What do we have a budget on this already? Thirty. Thirty is thirty. Okay, yeah. I think we come in. Um, so you're going to come in. You're going to come in at you know twenty four, twenty five here with the two recommendations that we gave. Right. And you think five would do the wood chips and I the borders? Think I just haven't. We haven't had a chance to go out and do it. Because the borders might be a, a good community project too. We yeah. have Plenty of carpenters. Yeah, I I agree. I think yeah. it's for every time I participate, it's a tremendous community activity. Yeah. Have people come and do it. Okay. Any other questions, Brian? Do you have any? No. Um, Amy, are you the one that selected the equipment? That, like, this $20,000, is that, like, who picked that? The children. Yeah. <laughs> is this, was this, this came from that? It did. Okay. This was an extensive. So, they, so you actually said, like, was it direct? 
All right. Yeah, they did their dream sheets. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. go back to the fall, and we looked for common themes among what they were wishing for, cool. surfaced um, several different designs, and the whole school voted in an all school meeting. No, yeah, I mean, my, my kids told me. I just, I'm like shocked that I, like, that's, that's awesome. Real. That cool. it actually that's real. That's the kids translated down. That's great. You're much nicer than I. <laughs> <laughs> Great! And now we're doing this. <laughs> I guess the one thing for obvious is that there was only one bid. Is there another yeah. source that we could uh, contact to well, see if they can beat it? Vendors. We contacted four vendors and only one decided to bid. Okay. Would we want to write back to those other ones and say, here's what our uh, bid is. Do you want to beat it? I can't do that. I don't, I don't think can't do that? Can't do that. No, I'm going to be sure that this bid law. And then go back to them. Big, and and no, you no can't. Public, public bid law. They get one shot. One minute, Chris. Sure. Well, in public bid law, we have to post it a certain way. Okay. We're allowed to send it out to at least three selected bidders when we send it out to as many as we want. We send it out to four. That's what we do that in that service our area. But once the bids come in and are all open, That's it. it must okay. be awarded. It, you That's can go with one of the lowest three bidders. Um, and if it's over a certain rate, you must go with the lowest and have no choice. Right. the people don't have That's if it's over $500,000 worth of work. We shouldn't do that. That's not a service. And, well, even some of the services are starting to get crushed. So, um, so right now we've uh, we've authorized in advance thirty thousand dollars. You have. We need this. you just to because of bid law. I need to accept you to the bid. Accept the bid. Okay. But we are accepting the bid for equipment only plus supervised installation. Yeah, that's recommendation. Okay. So, if, but if we're, are we accepting the bid on contingency that it meets certain a certain amount, or are we accepting the bid? And then in turn accepting that whatever it comes in, it's already bid. The bid. You have you have the bid there. Yeah. The the question that we talked about there was the ground covering, and I don't have an exact figure of what the wood chips are. Just looking at these wood chips prices compared to what I've seen for other wood chip prices, we've got to find something better. Yes, I, 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 we should go re and we can reject those wood chips and say let's find a different place to do that. Okay. So would just. Get the price. These are solid numbers. These are these are these are Got quoted. Okay. They wrote it on a piece of paper and said, okay. "This is what we'll do the project for, depending which one you want to." Okay. And, and the scope of supervision is what? Because that's the one that may not be it's based on a certain number of hours and a dollar like cost per hour. I don't have. Was ads. it project? We'll we have to get so many volunteers in that. And they base it on projects that they've done before and the, uh, the length of time it takes. And they get people in, let them know, but like they te they have little teams, and so they have a staff yeah. member with when each I one. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly when I did the Elmore Morrisville and Wolka school buildings. It was, you get, you get, it's a great PTNA, PTNO. They usually get everyone together and say, you're coming, you're working, but you're going to be directed. And, you know, the guy says, okay, you're going to dig, uh, you're going to, we're going to have a machine here to dig the hole. When that happens, then put this in here. You guys over here are gonna put together these components. Mm -hmm. Now everyone get together and haul it over. Stick it in the hole with the concrete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Temporary support it. It's cure in a week. Mm -hmm. okay. So I have one final question, and that is, um, I don't know this company. I don't know if anybody has any experience with this company. If not, um, I would be interested in getting reviews and at least checking on their work at other facilities before we actually agree to pay them $20,000. So we did that in our process. Great. They, they've done reputable work. Okay, excellent. I, we, I mean, the, the four companies we had, we use Black River Design for most of our work. Okay. Of anything we're doing, and I say, John, who are the people that, that you've worked with? And, and we've called, I don't know how many folks you called on them, but we, I mean, I trust John's judgment in what he does. Okay. There just aren't that many people. This is one of the problems with Vermont. I mean, you must, I don't know if you see it in your work, Allison, but we see it in schools all the time. There are really like one or two contractors in the whole state for a lot of things. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, if there are no other questions, um, there's a motion and I'll second it. I don't think there's a second. So you I moved, second. You moved it. I, I moved, so yes. So I will second okay. your motion um, on this bid. Um, all in favor? Say aye. No, just so I'm clear what I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing to, it is the equipment only plus supervised installation, or are we just more generally accepting? Nope, the, the equipment only and the uh, supervised installation, okay. equipment at 20186 and supervised installation at uh, $4,092.31. So Thank it's you. clear on the record. Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Before you quit, when is this proposed? This summer, right? 
when we get to see, there's out. one you need to bring out for people to let them right. mm -hmm. big time. So, the so, kids are thinking it's happening the, like as soon as the snow in the ground is on. I'm just here to like publicly report that. So you guys want to disappoint the children? <laughs> First, you need to find the delivery time and we're in the First day, first day. Okay, next up is um, uh, various practices, uh, practice for. Um, well, actually, establishing communication norms, 6.2. Now, who, who would like to speak to this? Um, that was my idea, just because I was, um, last year it felt a little confusing. I wasn't sure when people sent correspondence in to me specifically whether I was supposed to put that in the record or not. And I, I think we should just get really clear so that we know and that people who are sending us uh, correspondence or giving us a call know that. Um, so I don't think this will take us very long. Um, and I would suggest that practice, if we have incoming correspondence addressed to all members, that those should go in the board minutes. Um, but I'm, I'm open to hearing counter thoughts. Uh, I agree with the contingency that if somebody has a personnel matter and they request it as an executive session, but they're giving us the data, that it not be put in the minutes. I think we have to also be sensitive to what the information within the email pertains to because there may be something that's submitted to us as a board about a personnel matter that shouldn't be necessarily put in the public record mm -hmm. as an issue of privacy. Uh, so I think, I don't know if we... I, I think we can have sort of a, a general rule, but we, we're going to need to have exceptions for when certain things will require um, filtering or um, what else you would call it. Could we ask the writer if that person wishes the communication so, to be put in the public record? Let's yeah. get some, like, there may be limits on what we yeah, can Yeah, there, there's do. some so things that we, you, there's some limits that you can and cannot do. Okay, so this correspondence it comes in and it deals with a personnel matter from a member of the public, yeah. comes into any board member, um, not the board as a whole, but it's an individual member. Yeah, I would um, want to get you some clarity, frankly, Chris, before I spoke here. Okay. Um, because there is, it depends on position. Position of? The, that the person holds to. The person, the writer? Or no, the person being commented the on? The person being commented on. Okay. Um, to a degree. There's also just privacy piece, but that I'm, I'm thinking statutorily, um, and I'm not going to say I'm the expert on it. Um, I'm also going to say that if I wrote you a letter, I'm going to keep using myself as an example. Mm -hmm. If I wrote you a letter about my daughter Megan and decided to put the name in it and said this is what's going on at school to Megan, if you as a board posted that, you would have just violated her privacy. You don't have the right to do that, even if I said you could. Right. Okay, so the, the right is with the student, not the parent. parent right. Can't waive. The parent right. cannot waive student's rights. Okay. Exactly. That's one of the things that the student, it, there's many pieces on that around student record and student privacy. The parent doesn't necessarily have power over the student records or mm -hmm. student privacy. Those are two different things, right? And no, I mean, we know they don't have power over the student records as kept by the school. But what about, I mean, where's privacy? Like, that? I would like to see that. Well, it's it, the piece on that is that they can, they can say what they want. You can't then use that as a school. Like I could keep saying here, my Ma Megan's a ballet dancer and she's uh, she's run, she decided to run track, and I can say all this. You can't say that then repeat that somewhere, because I decide to give it to you. That's I can do that as a parent, but you are sitting as the organization of the school district. Like, I, I've had parents talk to me all they want about their kids in an open session, and I say, thank you very much. I'm glad to discuss this somewhere else. And they're like, why not here? I said, I'm in an open meeting. I can't talk about your child in an open meeting in an open public forum. Mm -hmm. You can't either as a board. So FERPA is relevant. What's the other So there's some personnel pieces that... In the, in the statute. That there's some personnel pieces that I would have to... I want to check, frankly, with Pietro about where those limits are. Uh, I just don't have those off the top of my head. I try to be very conservative to respect our personnel and say, 
you can talk about me, uh, but I think the personnel should be kept as quiet as possible. Just as an aside, we, we actually, when we were approving our minutes at our last meeting, we had mentioned a staff person by name in reference to some conversation we were having, and we actually removed it from the minutes mm -hmm. just because it, it's a policy, right? We try not to refer to people by name. Mm -hmm. by name. A policy or a practice? Um, yeah, I mean, it's not required. It's a good, so it's a practice. Yeah, it's I just good. wondered if you had your own policy because I'd love to see it so that we could. I don't think we do. Perhaps I think we adopt talked it. About it, and it was just a norm that we, we yeah. felt we always abided by, and we didn't want we didn't want to break in that case. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. I mean, to it me, it's be, it would be helpful for us as board to just have some uh, information about what the limits on on keeping things out of public record that we receive as board members is. And I, I'm thinking Chris Winter may be asking him to come and stop by because he's with the Secretary of State's office and deals with public record issues all the time. I don't think he'd be the one for personnel matters. No, I uh, think But that. he would at least be able to deal with that that aspect of um, what, what we can Yeah, I mean, Chris is, Chris is right there now in the legislature because they're looking at open meeting law again and open records. In legislature? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. big down there right now on that. I okay. mm -hmm. think that would be helpful for him. Putting this off and then having someone come in to tell us what where the, where the uh, fault lines are. I think so. For six point two point one, you mean? Actually, each one of those, everything down to because uh, six point 6. one, because six point sorry, six point two point one point two. Who responds and when? Seems like we could decide that. We did. De my my memory says that at some point since I've been on the board. We did discuss having somebody who was designated to respond. Thank you for the email. We will discuss it at a future board meeting or something along those lines. So they would know that they had been heard and that it would be discussed. And I feel like we fell apart in designating a person. And so then people aren't getting those types of responses. Um, so like when, when Katie Chabot sent her email, mm -hmm. You know, I, I wanted to reply, but then I thought, well, I don't want to violate open meeting laws, and it would just be great if we knew and didn't have to all agree that somebody, like Woden, Allison, somebody, just had a blanket response that they sent every time, and then they were responsible to bring the email to the board for us to discuss it and send a response that was representative of our discussion. Let me do that. That Wouldn't would be it be respectful for the person that you got received their email? Sorry, can you repeat that? Wouldn't it be respectful to the person that you, as the board, received their exactly letter, whatever, yeah. email, I don't care, because many times you don't know if somebody got it. Exactly. And that at least is the courtesy. I know we had to answer everybody's thing, no matter what. But you got their message. Yes. Okay. So are you, I feel you're talking about the person who gets it responds and says thank you up and bathes to the board as an immediate response. I think you should. But not, but yeah. the, not being the designated necessarily the designated response. Well, well you, that's, that's, that's a whole use. board. Actually, that's between yeah. use. But I mean, I think the, as a board, somebody or mm -hmm. individually, you got to decide that I got it. Thank you for consi right. your consideration. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it will be discussed at a future board. So. And that's, I think, why I divided these out into two separate pieces. Uh -huh. The first is the co correspondence that is addressed to all members. Mm -hmm. And Allison, if you as clerk don't mind sending a brief email saying yep. that, like I think meeting. would make, be really appreciate. But, but then when incoming correspondence comes to one person, that that member then right. is responsible for the um, for returning. And I, I actually have a clarifying statement on that. So it would not have occurred to me six months ago that if I sent an email commission to all of you, that it would then, oh, now we're going to talk about it in open session. Like, I would not have known that. So I think that the response needs to include, like, we're going to talk about this. If you don't want that to happen, you need to let us know. Can we, can we let them opt out, or does that violate open meeting laws? Like, so, so here's a piece that I want to say, and I'm looking for the policy, and I won't find it right away, but I know we have it, is we have an escalation of issues that are happening within the school. You know, if, if you have you, if you, you know, if someone comes to me as a superintendent, which happens quite 
uh, let's not even put a qualifier happens. Um, I the first question I ask them is say, hey, have you talked with your? Is this happening? You know, if they tell me the issue, okay, thank you. Is it happening in the classroom? Have you talked to the classroom teacher? The grocery store example. Yeah. Right. You know, and and <laughs> have you not? Okay. And so it's that escalation. Mm -hmm. So I think you should respond. I mean, what you're talking about is, is how do we respond so people know we got the message, which I think is a good one to have. And, and it's a good communication practice of, did you get the message? Yes, I got the message. Thank you. And this is because where you're going, Allison, is, is should it be in the, is that something that is a topic for the next board meeting or maybe it's not intended to be one? Well, that's a better question. I actually was just talking about the person. Maybe they didn't want that thing. But you're actually a very good question, which is should we even talk about it? And so I'm happy to be the first responder, but I will probably need clarification on some of those issues sometimes. Um, so does it violate meeting laws if I then BCC everyone so like, or copy everyone? Like I, I, I'm responding and I'm not entirely, if I'm not sure about, so, I mean, I'll send them back to the source because that's what you're supposed right. to do as much as possible, but sometimes I may not know. So. No, I don't think an individual board member responding. To, so what we were discussing was an email comes to the entire board. Right. I think there is a statement that we agree upon that gets re responded back, such as, thank you for the email. We will be discussing it at a future board meeting, as an example. Okay. It would be very different to say, um, Please, please go and speak with the principal first. That's a judgment call, and that I wouldn't put on an individual board member to make outside of a board meeting. Okay, so in that case, then maybe anybody who writes to all the board members should get a blanket response back that says, if you're having a problem with this, we are going to say this. We're, you know, like that lists what it is so that they know, as opposed to, like, for instance, Carol, Carol Lynn, I'm really sorry, I'll get it, I promise, um, sent a message back to Katie Chabot, and I got that as well. And I actually, not understanding all this, thought it was exceptionally dismissive. I was like, okay, so she doesn't care about that, and she's just like, oh, fine, we'll talk about it later. And now that I'm hearing this, oh, it all makes sense. She was just getting back to her, telling her, we've got this. But I don't know how Katie felt. I just think that it would be more clear if we sent them something with more. So maybe she make, when we, when we yeah. establish a protocol, publish the protocol and saying, and, and explain we're not being dismissive, we're just observing right. Right. Um, protocol for Here's the dealing with public yeah. correspondence. And right. there is, in the handbook, already an established communication. Uh, is it called a communication protocol, a communication It's flow? part of our, poli it's our, our policies. It's probably policy that you have as a board. Well, that that, you, and that's something that I just wanted to surface, is I've assured teachers, you know, and was my understanding that if it's an HR thing, that that chain of command will follow so oh, you will first true. talk to the teacher if that isn't if a resolution is not made then you're going to bring it to my desk if you're not happy with my resolution then you'll take it to mr kimball and that's the person who's actually has the problem does that yeah. we have nothing to do with that I don't not until right. like yeah. after right. all of those um steps have been taken okay great so, um, and, I, and that's two years ago we 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 worked on like creating the I don't, was a procedure, it wasn't a policy, it was a procedure to address exactly this. Mm -hmm. um, whatever happened to that? I have a final draft. You do? Mm -hmm. Chris and I worked on it. Um, I shouldn't say final. Close to final. The, the, the final draft lays with me. It got pushed off the agenda multiple times because of other priorities, and um, I would be happy to bring it back. It was around all communication, not just email, how to communicate at a board meeting. The idea being um, if everybody knows the rules and has the same expectations for communication, everyone in our community can communicate at board meetings, not solely people who are comfortable and know how. Um, so I do think it's important to bring it back up. That'd be fabulous. Yeah. Start yeah. work with that. Yeah. So can we get it ahead of time so we can? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Caroline, I'll if you want to ship that, we'll get it in the packet. Great. But these, these email or whatever correspondence from public uh, uh, members of the public to the board members is a different issue because it is. we're it's dealing with. There's a piece of that policy that's in there. The public, right? but well, when you receive it, it, it became part, part of the public record. record. So even, even if, if yeah, privacy, even if there's. Then if someone record. came to discover that public record. Right. right. It has to go past a different attorney's eyes to ensure that we're not violating. I do that all the time when there's a public records request. Mm -hmm. 
bad things are redacted. <coughs> I can take a crack at the response if you right. want, and I will bring something to the next meeting. And, and I'll reach out to Chris Winters. Or you could, sorry, no. send it ahead. You know what, and Chris? If we had feedback, we could think about it. I'm going to get it done in time. Well, I will. You're going to be there tomorrow night? One week. At exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Chris will be there. He's oh, on. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Here's my draft. It, the reason I bring that up is it might be better for the whole issue to have that discussion. Because it's the education of everybody. Yeah, I, I agree. It's public education too, so folks would hear and if they hear, I mean, I guess, I guess it could go on. Okay. It'll be on our I, I think it, it would be a great commonality to talk about that. Um, any more discussion on that issue? So six point two point two. Um, I guess I feel like it doesn't fit in in the same one, and maybe we could just decide. See, I think when a, when a member gets it, it becomes a public record, and that that is an issue that we should be clear on. I, I'm I'm with you on that one. You from know, what so I know, like it, 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 getting correspondence from a public in, from, as a board member, as opposed to hey, you coming over for pop up tomorrow night, um, you know, just it, it puts it into a different category. Yeah, so then that board member would be responsible for sharing it with the rest of the board. No, that that's not true. I think public a public record a public record and sharing it with the board and Publishing putting it in minutes, minutes are, are very different right. things. Yeah. Public record means it's discoverable. Right. And I'll let you define that right. because well, you're the lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but it's discoverable. It's a public record. It means now. if they, someone asked for it as a public official, you have to produce it. What about written or um, verbal communication? Nope. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> right, so then I think, again, a lot of people just may not know that. Email is very casual. Oh, I'm just going to go ahead and write my concerns, and now suddenly this is something that's discoverable. So can we let people opt out, just letting you know that if we follow up on this conversation, it now becomes a public once record. You, once you receive it, you it's may have it 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 written now. Okay. As okon, soon that's as where your website comes in, though. Yeah. If we can be very clear and then do a front porch form posting or whatever, here's what happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, then... Hopefully that'll get out. I think if you guys just make the website you more user friendly and you put all this information out there yeah. and then re advertise that you are making the website more user friendly because it's all in there, but you you have to dig to find this stuff. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. And I think if we put that information right next to our email and contact information, yeah, it exactly. would be a little easier okay. to see. Mm -hmm. All right. You have your own section maybe. School board or school? There already is one. It's just not. It's, just not, it's not obvious. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. Not that, it's no there. colored pictures. <laughs> no <laughs> colored pictures to find. Okay. Uh, next up, um, I think we did six uh, six point two point three is where and how to communicate norms to the public, and we'll address that with policy. Okay. We'll, we'll address next time. Uh, next is six point three establish uh, establish front porch form postings. Do we continue this practice? If so, we'll take on that one. So currently, my understanding is we publish the agenda as written. Okay. No opinions. Right. And Woden has been doing it. I'm happy Do to you keep wish doing to it. Continue? I mean, you know, Allison, if you want to take over in your role as, you know, if that feels, I'm, I'm happy either way. Um, I would like to take over, and I don't know if I can send things to you guys ahead of time. One of the things that I think would be really helpful is to give people a summary because I think a lot of people aren't going to read through and that, that is, I realize there's some editorialization there. Um, so it would be nice to avoid that. But for, for instance, if the agenda could say, here's the agenda, tonight we're going to be talking about reorganization, which means electing who's going to do what job. Um, we're going to hear from an emergency, emergency response and trying to summarize it in a, I feel like that would be helpful for people. Mm -hmm. That got, there was a sticky issue with doing so. that. Um, this was fine. This is off the internet, right off the line. I, I guess I'm accustomed to it. Mm -hmm. You know, one at a time, you bing them off. Okay. I think this yeah, was the, very good. This is, you know, and you stuck to it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> there was the intent, I totally understand. And with something like reorganization, a summary is simple. There was an intent to summarize in exactly that way, and others viewed it as an opinion, and it caused hard feelings so I think that the idea of summarizing it would be really tricky to do I think we yeah. aim for that as we improve our board relations <laughs> yeah right all right so, so, so we'll can start I, with can I, the agenda and then I can I address your other piece Allison uh, 
creating posts for front porch forums, every board's wanted to like discuss it via email, and you can't, unfortunately, according to open meeting law. You just okay. made it an open meeting. You just violated that. So okay. you have to appoint someone. Some boards rotate it. Some figure it out right there at the board table, and some do <laughs> what Woden's. I don't know if you were volunteering to do it or not. Sorry, I lost track. <laughs> you can or you can. Which you know, but that's someone that someone that. someone just posts up a summary and is trusted that that's the person that's going to take care of it. Okay. So. So I move that Allison Cornwall be in charge of front porch form postings. Great. <laughs> On the subject of emails, open meeting law, etc., Chris, I will forward you the agenda for the meeting tomorrow night okay. for the exact because it didn't it only went to Woden and I. And I was thinking of forwarding it to everybody, but then I didn't have everybody's forward email. So I'll just forward it to you. Thank you. That's the other thing, Allison. You'll want to be on a U32 email. It did. I said it up. Yeah, she is. She just, she, it, it. It just wasn't you know, automatic. I'd ha so I had to go back to her email, copy it, and then I realized Chris and Brian only have personal. So then I thought, I'm not, it just, I'm not doing if this. If we ever get in a discoverable place, we can do it a lot faster. Yeah. Been down the Who's road. the alternate? Mm -hmm. I have it. Never mind. I will send it to Chris and the alternate. It's just forwarding and emails. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so next is. Wait, do we need to vote on that or not? It's part oh. of the action agenda. I, I moved. A so second. I want a second. Second. Okay. All in favor of uh, appointing Allison as our front porch forum guru? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, next we're to appoint representative to discuss winter roads and bus issues at the select board meeting. Jesus. Uh, I'm glad to do that. They asked for the chair if possible. They did. Then I will go and, to the select board. If, yeah, and I plan to go, Chris, okay. since I'm in the operations mode of that. Okay. It's next Tuesday night. Am I correct on that? Okay. So the final um, order of business tonight is the... Um, what do you know if that's... I can um, find I can out. I can Approving the board orders. Do you want to have a chance to look at them? I did. I just had one question, which was Green Mountain Consulting for just over two thousand dollars. What's that? That's uh, we have a, be a behavior consultant who comes in and helps with student plans. Good job. I can't. Yeah, I think it's been this good. Goodness, we have a lot of very illegible handwriting. <laughs> Okay, I move that we approve the board orders in the amount of four thousand two hundred and forty four dollars and seventy seven cents. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, uh, for future board items, we have the principal preservation problem uh, process, uh, policy uh, and the uh, mediation discussion. Any other? Uh, potential topics the, that we discuss. Yes, if we put it here, it'll get on the agenda. Um, <coughs> public communication protocol. What did you guys decide to do about the gun resolution? Did I just call oh, the policy during that? Not we did not take that out. Um, we want to do that. Yeah, we no? want to do it tonight. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have a copy? I just need to get my computer going. I think I have it. I have I have U32s, right? I can pull that up. I don't have. Yeah. I have Montpelier, Montpelier Roxbury. Yeah, the Montpelier Roxbury is, is a few grammar pieces. So you have the East Montpelier one? I have both East Montpelier and U32. Are they, are they the same? No, East Montpelier decided to take a phrase out. Take what out? Take a phrase out. Oh, a okay. sentence out, actually, a whole sentence. And Worcester, you didn't discuss it. Okay. Did you guys have to communicate with the board members about the gun resolution? Yeah. You said 5 p.m., right? 5 p.m. Thank you. He's just going to take a minute to boot up. So, should we move on to 9.0? Calendar and communication. I don't know what that is either. Um, it seems like the issue we discussed. Right. I think we've discussed it enough with the calendar, and we'll be back more on that in April. I don't know if we'll be there for next week. It's developing a board calendar and board goals. You'll hear more about that tomorrow night, but you've heard some of that as the supervisory union goals, and we're 
trying to work mm -hmm. on alignment between and among boards, as Matt referenced earlier. Any other future agenda items that anybody has? I do have a question um, that is related to board calendar and communication. Do we want to continue the practice of meeting after the supervisor union board meets? There was discussion about having keeping meetings local. I don't, I don't, my preference would be to have separate meeting, local meeting, um, and to try and encourage participation because I don't think we get it at seven o'clock at night after a, a full board meeting. So, Do like, right, so like looking at these future agenda items, none of them are time sensitive. Do we need to meet next week as a local board after the SU meeting, or could we meet on April 12th to discuss these three so that they're discussed at our local school? So I just want to note that we, I'm sorry to interrupt, but, uh, but we are hoping to have something on the agenda for the SE meeting next week that would um, require local board um, decision maybe. It, it, a matter of 10 minutes, but I'm just telling you. Sure. So okay. Great. Can I have to be yeah. I, 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 one item on it? I don't know. But I don't think it's that simple for you to make that general sweeping piece. Mm -hmm. I can say specifically from uh, as far as what I would like to bring you for my report, I would like a little bit of time. Okay, so we could have a brief meeting then. Um, I know I mean two meetings in a, within a two week period, um, but. We could do that if everyone's up for that. I'm a little unclear, actually. Can we just recap? So, yeah. Norm, so next week is the supervisory union meeting. But we, we also have a local board meeting after it, like right. seven o'clock. Right. And we're saying that we don't want to do that, maybe. No, no. I was just bringing it up because it was mm -hmm. brought to me as a question. I do want to encourage community participation. From my standpoint, it's actually much easier to do one night than to try to skip out on dinner, bath time, bedtime, two nights. So, mm -hmm. from the standpoint of uh, because if I if I go to two meetings at six o'clock, well now I can't go to I can't have dinner with my kids and I can't put them to bed two nights as opposed to powering through on one night. So mm -hmm. that's just my thought on it. I agree with you. It's easier for me to get there at seven p.m. Yeah. 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 Ye
achieving their goals. They state them. They right. develop a work plan. <laughs> they have a, the whole year is laid out. We know it's actually really easy for the chairs. They say, so this is what the Adrian McGinna, if you want to learn from anybody, she's the best at it. She says they work with you through this year or goals, and then she brings them a copy. What do you think of this work plan? And literally at the end of each meeting, so this is what's on for next next month. Are we still good with that? And it's really it's a breeze to service from the principal and the superintendent standpoint. We can really then we kind of know where we're going. So I echo that. Um, I can read this to you now if you'd like. That'd be great. Thanks. So the board of directors of U32 Middle and High School finds that it is our paramount responsibility to ensure a safe learning environment for our students and a safe workplace for our employees. We find that schools have become targets for mass murder with firearms. We have installed safety equipment and protocols to protect the people in our schools and will continue to work with our community and our legislatures to make our schools as safe as possible. We do not support arming our teachers with guns as a measure to increase safety in our schools. We, yeah. the board of U32 Middle and High School, resolve that our elected officials in the Vermont House and Senate pass effective gun violence prevention legislation during the 2018 legislation session that is adequate to protect our students and that you sign such legislation into law to take effect immediately. Four relevant pieces of legislation are currently before the Vermont House or Senate. S6 related to universal background checks, H422 related to removing guns from the scene of domestic violent crime, S221 related to enabling law enforcement officers to get an order to remove guns when a person shows signs of threat and danger, and H876 related to prohibiting bump stop, bump fire stop for firearms. We urge serious consideration of these bills as a first step towards effective gun violence prevention legislation that protects our students. This is a lot, and that was all from Montpelier, Roxbury. The line they added at the end, and this was, as I said, I was very proud, it was after a great discussion. We recognize and honor the activism of our students, the healthy diversity of opinion among them, and the civility of their debates. Sincerely, the U32. Middle and High School District Board. And East Montpelier? East Montpelier took out that last line yeah. because they didn't feel it was part <laughs> of the elementary school. Because it was just, you know, I agree with that. Uh, so if you want to just so resolute that, that, we could get your, we wouldn't be able to get your signatures, but we put your names at the bottom. We did this for you there too because we were, before they went for recess, or no, no, they were in recess at that point, but we wanted to get to because two of the bills were going pretty fast through the Senate. That has slowed down since then. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted your signature, we could you could pass it tonight. We could, you could come in and sign it, or you could just we could just put that that was resolved as it does here for U thirty two on the date tonight's date, and we send that as I told you we sent that to what all your representatives and senators, chairs of the affected committees, and the governor and the secretary of education. And East Montpelier, that's what we did for that yesterday. Okay. Is there a motion? Well, I, I have a discussion. I, I mean, we can make well, a motion just, first. Right, just to That's discuss. Um, uh, I'll move that we um, adopt the resolution. Um, and now, is there a second to open it up for discussion? A second to discuss. Okay. Discussion? So, yeah, there's a line in there about um, the arming teachers. And I guess my concern is that's taking a, a quote. Um, why wouldn't we say that we didn't we wouldn't support arming any staff and then it, it, it and I say that because in North Carolina the principals have a lockbox with a gun and have and um, so I would support making it broader than just we don't support arming teachers and that way it's not do we indeed support not having security personnel on campus, like in the in the future? I don't think. Well, think the school doesn't hire. Like oh, so they don't. So that wouldn't be an employee of the school. If we just say personnel, then wouldn't that include anybody we had hired, in that capacity? 
Well, we could say staff or administrators, um, non non person, not security staff or administrators. And That's if how we could it, get around that, okay. we're, we're and I would, yeah, that'd be great. I would say we are. N well, anyway, I, mean, I would I'm be comfortable in my statement, but um, uh, yeah. Um, the one question I had is whether the word adequately is adequate enough as opposed to proactively protect, because um, adequately protect. Yeah, that's that's a little weak, I think, in terms of what yeah. we should be doing. Uh, They're working on the words. So to proactively protect, as opposed to adequately protect. No, we do not. We're working on talking about it. Um, I'm going to vote for this. I do um, want to propose adding a line in there, or something along the lines of we recognize and honor our state's traditional tradition of responsible gun use, um, because I think. Um, there is a bit of a culture war piece to this, and I want to make sure that we honor um, the diversity of our um, members of Middlesex. I don't know that I can support that in a, in a statement connected to school safety. Like, I hear what you're saying, but I would want to keep the two uh, um, separate, personally. Would you let me ask you this? Because we, you can keep debating. I, I right. can have this printed out and have it ready for you next next Wednesday. I do not think the House and Senate. You what? I don't think the House and Senate will be passing something within the next week. They may, but it, they really slowed down. At, they were trying to get something done before uh, the town meeting week break, and they've slowed down. Um, but if we can stay here too, I'm just trying to facilitate, help facilitate your conversation to have something to look at. Because if we're doing this mm -hmm. without looking at it, and either way is fine. I'm just trying so, to help. Um, anyone who's uh, proposing an amendment, do you want to make it, it actually as a proposal to amend? And we'll just take one. Sure. I, get, I want to know if, I mean, if people agree. There, There is reason to keep the word that they don't support arming teachers, because that was a proposal, a statement right. made. So there's reason for that being in there. I would want to take it a step further, but um, I'd be willing to hear other people's opinion on that. Meaning that uh, no personnel, you know, within school grounds, right, should be possessing a firearm. Well, actually, that's or, policy already, I think. Probably, <laughs> it, it is. Um, In this district, it is. Yeah, I guess it's good. changing the word "teacher" to um, "staff," faculty and staff. No, I'm that. In Vermont, just as a point of information, Vermont state statute, uh, uh, the only one allowed on school grounds with a firearm is a police officer. Police officer. Or a state police. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, yeah. Right. Which would, well, this is just a well, resolution. But, but we're also trying to thwart, thwart legislation that would pro proactively mm -hmm. say teachers should be armed. Is that the sense of it? Because I don't think that's proposed I think, here. I think, I think that's, that's the intent. in other yeah. forums. I think that's the intent is to say Vermont and will not support We don't that. want to do that. We don't right. want to support that's not arming, a solution. arming staff. Right. Right. Um, I don't have anything specifically about this this um, resolution. I'm in sort of full support of, of it and um, sort of the, the amendments, um, I guess, as proposed by um, Chris and... Caroline, I'd just like to take this opportunity to, you know, this is important sentiment, but, you know, what are some of the deeper, you know, causes that, you know, lead to this type of violence even happening? And what are we, what is our commitment as a board to do with it within our power to create an environment, a school environment that is, is, is a prevention mechanism from this happening? And, I mean, that's, that's the conversation long-term that I'm much more interested in having. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, the, yeah. The, the number one piece of evidence that we have as administrators is caring deep relationships between and among staff and students, and that every student has a trusted adult. doesn't have to be the, necessarily their primary teacher, but has someone... They can trust him. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Okay, so we move that we uh, no. amend the resolution uh, to uh, change arming teachers to arm any staff member. And take did you so No, I, I'm actually like as long as we there's you know established that policemen and everything Police in whatever capacity are completely fine. Any staff member. Yeah, that's great. Um, and move that we amend the uh, resolution to uh, replace adequately with proactively protect. Got that. Okay, so through here. Can I put a comment in? If you don't continue to drive the Senate legislators, it'll get bogged down. I know that, you know, that we worked on it. If you, and the kids, they have to be there every day. It just doesn't work. It'll get, it'll get stymied, it'll get pushed back. Buried. And buried very quickly. So you, even if it isn't perfect, you, they still know you're interested. You still ding the bell. I mean, the difference of school, uh, teachers, principals, unarmed, and someone else comes in and is armed, or you have a, a officer or something, the point is you're still pounding at them that it's high on your agenda. They don't read it. The fact is you bombard them with this stuff. It needs to be continual. And you, it's like um, a weekly thing that you've got to keep it on the list because they got, there's so many things that are in their agenda. And if they aren't, you know, it's a squeaky wheel, it's a grease. It's exactly what it is. And if you don't manage to keep that wheel noise unnoised, they won't bother you. But if it's pestering them and agitating them, they'll do something. So my comment is keep doing it, and every month or every week you resend the same thing again to say you got to keep working at it. It'll will, it will get pushed back, and nothing's going to happen. We can see it federally. I can see it federally. It's not going to happen because it's going to drop. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Any comments? Um, any, any more discussion on the May I ask you resolution and amendments? I saw some nods when I said that East Montpelier dropped the last line about respecting. I think that's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so we'll I just want to know. Amend it by striking that last line okay. as well. Unless we're supporting the Middlesex students who attend U32. We are, but I think it's. It almost seems like it ties it to our students. Okay. And that's mm -hmm. not okay. Do Got it. I just wanted to check, and yeah. I'm fine either way. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, ready for a vote? I just want to say I'm 100% comfortable with this. I do, I am concerned um, just because it plays out in our house about sort of, <laughs> you can guess, Bill, right? <laughs> this is of gun, this ownership is, you know, guns are very divisive. Yeah. Let's do a separate resolution coupling it right, tonight. Separate resolution okay. reflecting what your, your sentiment is. Yes, I will that work. works for me. I just okay. want to be really clear that yeah. we're making okay. a conscious communication, yes. not only to the legislature, but also no, to our community. To our community. Yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Um, so, all in favor of the resolution as amended? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay, now I would move um, to another resolution uh, that uh, the, uh, the Middlesex School Board um, understands the um, responsible use of guns um, or firearms in Vermont um, and uh, respects to individuals who um, handle firearms in a respectful and safe manner. You can amend that any way you want. Maybe respects the, I like the tradition like of responsible gun too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then that's fine. Uh, Does that work? Yeah. So, we, so state the resolution that you well, The one that I wrote down, but I like what you said too, is we recognize and honor our state's tradition of responsible gun use. Okay, I would second that uh, resolution. Any discussion? I have no idea how I feel about that. I don't think I could vote on that. <laughs> I, 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 as a school board yeah, member, that's, that's I don't, well, I yeah. don't know that I could vote on that. I, I, I mean, I see what you're saying because we don't want to divide our community on a gun issue. But the proposal to me doesn't do that. It's very specifically about keeping guns out of our school, period. And I think bringing any other discussion in it puts me in a position where it has nothing to do with my knowledge of school or school safety. It's a personal opinion of um, 
firearms and how they're used and and that brings up a lot more than we have time to discuss here so I wouldn't be able to vote on on that it on that um, resolution yeah you know, I, I I agree with with what you're saying I mean I, I it's as an individual, but as a board member, I just don't know if, I don't see it as my place yeah. to me making a resolution about that issue in this setting. I just, I think that's just, I don't know, I think that's beyond the scope of what, um, what we're charged to do. Um, so I, I understand the sentiment of where this is coming from. I just, uh, I don't know if this is the forum, the forum to be. I take your point, and really, we're not actually talking about responsible gun use at all. We are only talking about irresponsible gun use. So, but the the point I think is that when you talk about irresponsible gun use, that becomes the only focus, mm -hmm. as opposed to um, individuals who do responsibly um, have firearms uh, and use them as you know even food gathering still, mm -hmm. um, but use them well. And, and the you know it's kind of like it's. It can be an implicit taint. Um, and we're not talking, we're talking to our community members because there are plenty of families um, who, and students, I bet, who use firearms, um, both at U32 and here at, at Romney School. So it's, it's, um, it's, I think it's an inclusionary uh, type resolution of saying we're, we are concerned about protecting our students from um, bad actors, but we're not condemning um, or cast an inspiration on gun use or possession as a whole. And I think that that's fair balance to strike here. So I would I would hope that we could at least pass that sentiment because it does impact uh, family members and students here, is my, my belief. Um, so Do you have any way in which you can see incorporating that? or? I, I, I would say that if you guys want to bring this forward, I'm just going to abstain um, from voting. I feel the same way. On it. Yep. Okay. What about you, Alison? I'm a little on the fence. I'm just like, I wish I could see what we had written down and wondering if we could, you know, somehow incorporate something into the actual statement that what we were eating. was a little, that tried to designate that we were talking about this specific situation. But I do actually see the point of not, not bringing, like, additional. I mean, really, all we're talking about is not bringing guns to school. And it is unfortunate that that gets tossed into a larger gun debate. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, so I, I hear what Chris is saying that yes, like even though that's not it's not correct, it does get tossed does into a larger sense. debate. And at the same time, I also very much hear Caroline's point that well, do we really want to be? Do we really want to go there at all? Um, I I would say can can we? I would just wait. I would say let's. I would like to think about it a little bit, frankly, and see how you see where I land. It's it's late. Okay, should we table it? Do you want to table it? Yep. Okay. Maybe we put on so the we'll agenda vote on next week and yeah, we can do that. We'll table this resolution to next week. Okay. Any okay. And we'll get the language of it ahead of time sufficiently. Uh, you'll, you'll get the resolution tomorrow. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, the one you adopted. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. The one you adopted. You want the language of the, the other one? No, the one that we just. Is passed. it in the minutes? Okay. okay. Or just. Oh, I guess will the minutes be? Yeah, the minutes may not be available. For They'll be available for next week. Yeah. It will be. It must be. Any other business? Before we adjourn. Okay. We Thanks adjourn. for coming. Yeah. <laughs> There's cake if anybody would like cake. And it's good. Thank you.